Um, so first call to order is a comment. Anyone on the notice there's no in the room? Anyone on the screen uh, wish to make public comment? It's funny because when we look at the screen for public comment, we're actually turning our heads away okay. from right. Oh, the public. Oh, okay. <laughs> good to know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. But that's unfortunately how we. It's a small room. That's how we find them. Um. So, and then consent agenda, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda. Uh, do I have a second? Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Great, and now we're on to um, updates. Uh, I'm also a tool from Andrew. I do want to, before we launch into that, um, uh, thank you have the board and everyone else. The effort is Andrew, Tom, Chris, Kim, Libby, uh, Jason, everyone else has been over the last uh, past month to deal with um, both the planning situation at high school and also just the support of the school community. Maybe you've reached out and um, you know, offered daycare and and other services, um, all of which is appreciated. It's so it's been a very tough month for Montpelier. Everybody's looking for a very hard game to see everyone pull together. Um, and uh, it looks like, as Andrew's going to tell us, that we are in a about as good a place as we can be with the high school. Um, and uh, maybe really just the tireless efforts of both Andrew and Tom and the team. Uh, going above and beyond to make sure that uh, the situation is going all the way so we can uh, get school started um, in a safe and effective manner. So, with that, I will turn it in. So, uh, we are in the throes of uh, putting things back. Excuse me, you all are muted. There's no one can hear out here. I think you need to unmute, please. And thank you. This is Lisa Burns. I, I would like you to unmute, please. Could you? And it's not working. Oh, Sorry, no. for one person just to like give the memo. Yeah, Anna, can you tell Anna to speak to let people know that we're trying? Test, test. Can you all hear me in the room? This is Anna. I can hear you all, and I can hear Lisa. Um, I'm not sure. It to me, it does not sound muted in the room. Lisa, I'm able to hear, and I'm here in the Zoom. Lisa, can you hear me talking right now? This is Anna in Zoom. Is there any way for you to chat with Lisa, Anna, to let her know? That yes, I, I can do that. And Emma, I can hear you. I can hear everyone in the room. So, Oftentimes, I leaving chat will help with audio. Thank you. And sometimes it's just a matter of turning the volume up on your computer. I have definitely, I have definitely found myself in that situation. Right, or like muting my computer. Right, from something else. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Anna. Yep. So, um, so let's see here. So, um, well, we are, so why don't I go backwards a little bit and then go for it. So, uh initially when the flood happened uh visbit the insurance folks uh were right on top of it they had uh pure clean head down immediately before i even got there uh, excuse me again um it seems that orca media is on mute um i'd appreciate it if you would ask orca media to actually broadcast sound because uh, there's no sound coming through and chat was uh disabled See if that helps. Enable chat. Have, uh, enable chat just for a minute to play. Yeah. Yes, Lisa, I am sending you a chat. Um, I will enable it for everyone, but I'm chatting with you uh, actively, so check that. Lisa, can you hear me? This is Anna Hipko in Zoom. 
I don't think Lisa can hear anything from Zoom or the room. I yeah. So uh, we um, so we immediately the next day. Um, this is not working, and as you see on the upper screen, Orca Media is in fact muted um, out here. My volume is up to a hundred percent. You can clearly hear me, and I see uh, Anna has reactivated chat, but uh, this meeting is a public meeting and it's not being broadcast. Please see what Orca Media could do. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. They're bringing me a new camera. It's coming through this mic. I'm clearly Anna not can hear you, muted. but I don't think it's your camera. Yeah. Well, it, it's not good audio right now. We're gonna get. If that. you would look at your screen, Orca Media uh, is muted. That's isn't that the case in every board meeting? I think it is. It's there's a different Orca Media that's screen recording, right. so they're probably. So, so you are not muted. I, no. Yeah. I I have just I have just renamed Orca Media that is not muted Union Elementary School. And I can hear it. I can hear Lisa. I, I believe the issue is a technical issue uh, for Lisa. And Lisa, if you can hear me, I'm direct chatting you. Um, chat is enabled for everyone at this point. Um, Lisa, if you can hear me, let's uh, communicate and chat and try to work this out. But, uh, but everything technically is working. David Delcor, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, um, so uh, the next day we immediately started, they immediately started pumping water out of the basement. We had about four and a half feet or so of water in the basement uh, coming through all the foundation penetrations and we think probably groundwater. As well. try, it doesn't sound so they started pumping. They immediately brought up a uh, dehumidification team from Mississippi. We set up. Uh, they um, as soon as the water was gone, they what they've been doing is they've been pumping hot air into the basement and then sucking it out at two ends, pulling that out, and then uh, on the main floor and the second floor, they've been pumping in air conditioning for two reasons: to keep the humidity down as well as pressurize the rest of the building. So the Building basically under negative pressure, so everything's been coming out and leaving the basement. Um, that has been going well. Uh, the anticipation is that they will be done with that process um, by the end of next week, um, which will be uh, which will allow Tom enough time to do the. They've been able to work around that equipment with big giant tubes running throughout the building. Um, but that should give Tom enough time to finish off the work he has to do. Uh, the step that we're in now is the disinfection phase. While uh, right now they're running tests in the basement with three different dis disinfectants. They actually took the swabs yesterday, so we'll get a result of the one that's working better than the other, or whether they all work well. Um, and as soon as we have that result, we'll know which direction to go with regards to that. And they're basically going to be spraying up the non technical terms, but a hospital grade disinfection down there in the basement. Um, once that gets done, they'll do another, run another test. You know, we should be fine at that point. Uh, we're also doing some air testing on the first level just to make sure that you know, everything is good there. Really the stage should be good. We're expecting nothing but positive results on that because they have some negative air pressure in the building. Uh, we were very fortunate in that the water never reached the first floor and it never reached our um, mechanical equipment, the individual devices, actuators. Uh, so the boilers did get flooded, some electrical panels got flooded. Um, that of a water tank, water heaters, or a water heater. Uh, that is in the process of being put back in place. Uh, water heaters for the kitchen is going in. It was brought in yesterday, but it will be uh, installed today. Uh, we'll have one of the boilers up, the burners getting installed on Friday. 
DDC and a couple of the DDC things that, that, that got wet. Um, that was with our in place in state and just need to be hooked up. What's the correct digital control? So, uh, we did, but luckily they didn't get wet. It was just the main brain that got a little bit wet. So, are these new or are these like you're taking the, the old ones were taken out and you have dealt with and being reinstalled, or these are new replacement pieces? Uh, basically, if they, yeah, we're replacing it. If they got wet, we're replacing yeah. okay. it. We're replacing it. Yeah. Uh, one of the big pieces that we don't have to deal with right now, but we will eventually, is um, the electrical service that was in the basement. <laughs> Um, we're going to move upstairs. We're very fortunate in that our electrical cutoff is from outside, so we're able to kill the power for the building for a week or so without having to swim to it. But as part of code and, and uh, I think it's Montpelier specific and Barry, they now want electrical services up above the bud plant. But luckily, we've got space right above where the stuff is now. It has to be replaced anyway. Um, once something like that gets wet, we have to replace it, but we've got, they do 90 day waivers and they know it's been for a while, but it's all been inspected and it's all been signed <laughs> off on. Um, site wise, uh, we're very fortunate that the game field and the baseball field and the back practice field survived really well. Uh, softball field is gone. The, the clay that was in the softball just went away. Um, so what we've done is we build that back in. We'll address rebuilding that either in the spring or the fall, probably the spring. Uh, the front mud lot and the practice field out front um, took it pretty, it's it's a remarkable, if you go by now, you'll see they're scraping it off. It's an amazing amount of, for what you wouldn't know is down there, there's an amazing amount of dirt. So we're in the process of um, scraping that all down, uh, ship seedings from uh, Diamond Tech, um, because our athletic fields, because the Mountaineers does these are too. He's working with them advance for in the spring, they'll go back and reseed and, and do regrade and do their soil testing and like that. Right now, what we're doing is we're scraping them, we're scraping the silt, silt off, we're going to aerate it, throw some grass down just to stabilize it, and then we'll pack it up here. We've got half the good practice field out front is didn't get affected. It wasn't affected by silt, so we at least have that front piece. Um, Matt Link has been working with Onion River Soccer. So, as I understand it, and there's probably clarity on the, around this, but middle school soccer is going to practice up at the Vermont College of Fine Arts Green. And we're, we're working with Chips, helping them, and we're helping Onion River kind of maintain that field, <clears throat> which is fine because we would have otherwise rented fields down the Dog River. Those fields are. Those fields are in toast. Um, those, those fields are in tough shape. Um, so I think Matt's got a very good plan on how he's going to shuffle things athletic, athletic fields around. Once we probably won't get those other fields back for a year, so we'll probably have to plan on, which is okay because those fields needed a rest anyway, and they'll just be better for it, you know, in the end. But that, especially the mud lot field, I think. Um, as part of this reconstruction, it's going to be much better with the, with the much better practice field. Um, yeah, the impacts for the rest of the buildings, uh, Nikki, and I want to say that that the one thing that you know, Kim and Chris and Tom have done an amazing job and worked tirelessly, but Tara and Mickey and their crews just picking up the slack and yeah. doing their doing their job as football coach once said. Um, it's been great. And he's been able to absorb part two and his own learning and the, the summer summer school or what the right you know, the right jump by he is wise and same other school. Um, so he's been able to um, been able to uh, that those people those folks while Sarah and her group has been sort of absorbing the construction that's been out. Going really well, and we were all planning for a nice quiet August, but but at least we've been able to. Uh, I don't think anyone's been overburdened by it all, and uh, this has been great with regards to just get it done, get it fixed, and all of the contractors that we work with have are, are have all stepped up. So uh, we'll get our we'll get our air tests and our soil tests back this week, and you know, the presumption is that we've got a plan moving forward, and that. Schedule should not be interrupted. That's 
That's the expectation at the moment. It's a yeah, the calls were kind of disturbing. Did that like mess with the foundation or anything? No, no, they were isolated. They were, it was more like an old, you know, they, <clears throat> when they, one of you know, like one of them by the chicken was an old sewer that when they put the addition on, they didn't fill it in and didn't soak the water. And you started the electric, it's probably the right term, but electromagnetic imaging. They, I think they could sound, I think sounding is a better term. Um, so, see if there's any more. Yeah, we had Bisbet had, um, had their building consultants come through. Wise gentleman of 24 years old. Um, <laughs> but they had, a group, <laughs> they had a group of engineers that have come through, and it, it's sort of not only a check on the work we're doing, as like we're not overdoing it, but also to make sure that we're doing it. We're not underdoing it. So, that report, I believe, is probably he said it was they were expecting it this week, so by next week, um, we it's should have. Um, yeah, 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 we started all that work. So, um, so yeah, there's no, there's no apparent structure. <laughs> so, well, have, have any of the uh, air quality tests come back yet? No. Yeah. No. The ones on the first floor, you need thermal. Yeah, yeah, like is that that's sort of the only potential, you know, sticking point for having kids re-enter the building at this point? Um, it could, yeah, it could be. And at the same time, the people who are professionals in this, we requested it. Like Andrew and I requested to do the air testing on the first floor. And they were like, yeah, we should do that. But it, it wasn't like a priority okay, yeah. right off the bat. So I so our professionals aren't overly concerned about it. Um, but you know, knowing peace of mind that we were like, yeah, we're gonna want that, you know, as weekly for the first month and then we can let it off a little bit after that. So uh so yeah, the guys are gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. We're working with Katie Associates up out of Berlin. Um so they're a well respected testing agency for health and health and so yeah. Is there any? I mean, it seems like there must be some cost to the district, or like a deductible or something, or it's five thousand dollars. Well, the deductible is probably going to increase over. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering, are there are unexpected, significant expenses because of this? No. They have not said no, and actually, uh, they are going to cover. Uh, they're going to cover contents. So we've gone through and the We didn't have a ton in the basement of the high school. Uh, well, we've already started that process of like inventorying everything and getting quotes and pulling that all together. Uh, but no, they've been very good. They, they, uh, there's a few things that we're not 100 sure on. I think we're pretty confident that they probably won't. I think we're pretty good. I think, but we'll see. Oh, and now, and, and again, we I can't say how that work with us. And they had the they had the murder order on Wednesday, but we just said no. Wow. So we will probably be working on. We've got three boilers. We'll probably be working on the one for the first couple of weeks. Uh, that'll be fine. So it's just hot water. And actually, we're going to convert. Our plan is to convert right now. The oil furnaces make hot water for the building. Uh, we're going to convert, we're going to probably put the uh, heat pump hot water heater in there to take care of the summer load. So, um, along the next part of complete, along the lines, there are um, improvements that can be made that make the building more resilient in the future. And presumably, we're going to have future events similar to this. I'm curious if there are other things. And the army um, that are you know, upgrades and also the program. I would say the only real uh, future proofing we're doing right now is planning for moving the electrical entrance. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we're, we'll probably end up, but we may end up, uh, yeah, that's that's the first one to jump on. Right now, we did for this. Given the fact that school was starting in six or seven weeks, we're going to have to get back to your Yeah. 
Um, yep. There were a number of capital projects we wanted to do to all of our buildings this summer. Yep. Did this impact their timeline at all? A um, little bit, a little bit. So we're fortunate in that in working with the wall, you know, they're they're not going to be rebuilding a small storefront down on Main Street. Plumbers, small electricians, small contractors, yeah, they're going to be really good. But we, I think we're in pretty good shape. Obviously, things aren't as smooth just because we lost a week and people just jumping into the breach, even if they're not going to do the ultimate reconstruction. Uh, you know, we lost the electricians for a week. They were just wandering, going for town and all that. So we're a little bit behind, but I'm still optimistic that we will fundamentally be done before kids get in school. You know, there may be somebody that needs to get in and do a little work here, a little bit there, but the sort of banging of nails and cutting of two by four will definitely be done before <laughs> school starts. And the guidance office at at, Union, at Main Street Middle uh, and the cafeteria read new stairs in the cafeteria and all that, that's basically waiting for sheetrock to be sanded and painted and ceilings. Uh, over here, the little gym is, is all studded up. They're roughing in the electrical right now. Um, and the gym or the auditorium is uh, there. They pull, had to pull some seats to get the lift in there. But again, once they'll get rocking and rolling in there, they should be should be pretty good shape. So again, it's good. Yeah, it's gonna. It's not gonna be done and done by the thirty first. But we won't have you know, the building full of contractors. So somebody can get in for a couple hours now. Were we able to start on any windows this summer? No. Oh, okay. What was holding up on that? Well, that was that was a cost, not necessarily a cost issue, but a coordination issue with regards to the coordination issue. Okay. But it's still it's, it's there, it's been designed, and it's it's not what you can This is related. So in some of our you know building upgrade projects are connected to the ESSER funding. Is any of that kind yep. of because we have a deadline of September 2024 on that? Right. Is that all? Yeah, yeah. Esser, the auditorium is, or the, excuse me, the little gym is an Esser project. The uh, cafeteria is an Esser project. Um, and that's over at Nice Yeah. yeah. We, we redid the stair, the circulation to give up. That was something Julie really thought was important. And, uh, so we got that one, we got that one going. And so next year, it really finishes in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. We and we might get an update more on this building <laughs> meeting next week but in terms of the track and so i met with the engineers on the track yeah. and uh one of the things that we talked about was the idea of moving where our our uh retention pond or treatment area is into a different location and uh they believe that we can do that which would really um significantly reduce the amount of soils that needed to be shipped up to Coventry. So that would kind of take that out of the mix. So we just have to do a little more testing in that area, that one area to really find that. So uh, that's on my list of things to do is to and um, reissue that bid set out probably, um, I think every time in December, but I'm not 100% sure on other, right. but, but this but this one term. This yeah. One. Kind of connected back to what Scott was saying. This all begs the question of not if this will happen again, but when this will happen again. You know, I think we thought Irene was the hundred year or five hundred year storm, and now it turns out it was a ten year storm. Um, so, you know, thinking about that, I'm curious, just with like technically, NHS is in the floodplain, yes, mm -hmm. firmly and <laughs> squarely in the floodplain. Um, RBS is in the floodplain, I would imagine. Do we get flood insurance that kind of allows and provides a larger umbrella of protection? Or I just I've heard lots of different things about flood insurance over the last month, and you know who can qualify and who can't, and what it covers and what it can't. But you know, just obviously as we're thinking about this, it feel and we're going to be laying out large sums of money to make these changes and improvements and additions to our, our campuses, you know, just the resilience piece, you know, what can be done, can we raise things 12 to 14 to 24 inches and does that even help or are there other things that can be done as we're about to sink, you know, yeah. lots of money into these upgrades and improvements that are clearly valuable and yet it feels like we're on shaky ground. 
Well, I think that's a good question for business. I mean, they obviously yeah, the insurance they company. obviously are yeah. working with us and covering things. So right. that's a, that's a good thing. But and the other the, the thing about business is that they're it's the Vermont School Board Insurance Trust. So they schools are their thing. So they're not going to be like, oh, we're not going to cover you guys anymore. We're dropping that line of insurance. So they're they're always going to be helpful. Um, now whether they're not their underwriter, overwriter. Traveler, yeah. Travelers is their yeah. insurance yeah. company. Yeah. So whether Travelers wants to do it anymore, that's a different that's a different conversation. But that's a well definitely uh, it's gonna be a conversation that's gonna obviously happen. Yeah. There's the also some things that in, I know enough to be dangerous, who knows all the real stuff. So yeah. um, but as I understand it, the way our soccer field has been designed and the way our baseball field has been designed, the reason why they survived so well, even though they were under the same amount of water, is because they've been designed to drain right? So we do have specific things in place, particularly outside, you yeah. know, that um, helps with this situation so that it's not catastrophic across the entire ground. The building, I think the thing, uh, right, ginormous building like that is probably out of the question. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, I, I just don't think that's a physical thing to do. Yeah. And I don't think the field is either. Mm -hmm. Just because when you lift it somewhere there, they're going to watch you to level it off somewhere else. Yeah. 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 But, but, yeah, but they're designed on the They did really, those two fields did really well. Yeah, it was really, I think, I think that it was the, the log jam at the bridge itself that really. Yeah. Yeah. Around yeah. And sort of yeah. calm down as it after it got past. That's where it really all the most of the mud and stuff is. So okay. by the time it got to the building, it did sort of slow down and spread out. Did you say the track surface was damaged? Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we started to... Andrew and I are discussing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciated all your updates and your videos. Yeah. Uh, it looked like, like the Got a road out to the track. Got it. The road. That one got, yeah, that one has been, so we, the parking lots have been, the bad areas have been cut out and backfilled with, uh, and have been backfilled. They haven't been paved yet, and I'm sure it's just a matter of waiting for a, a project that will justify loading up the, the mix and doing not only our project, but another project in town. Uh -huh. But they, they, they've been, this, the campus will be safe. The campus will be safe. All those sort of trip hazards are gone at this point. I want to reiterate the thanks that Jim voiced at the beginning of the meeting, but, um, you know, I've been spending a lot of time at the public pool and here and there, out and about, and lots of people have been singing your praises. And, um, you know, I think it's unfortunate that you've had to be tested in this way Again. So, so much. Um, but I did message with and I was like, please don't quit your day job, even though you're <laughs> so good at disaster management. <laughs> but, like, you really do have, like, sort of a special talent in that way, and yeah, it's great well, to have you. Andrew. Andrew and his team work in... Not Tom and his group. They, they... Yeah. Well, just deep appreciation to everyone. And if there's anything, I feel like probably everyone at this table would be willing to pitch in if there's anything getting closer to the deadline of like bringing people back into the building. If there's, if we need more hands for something. We've gotten good with shovels and rakes. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, uh, thank, uh, you. Thank, you thank you, Andrew. Um, Orca has requested just a quick break so we can switch cameras. Okay. So we'll just take a quick. Oh, um, and uh, just due to technical difficulty, we will reopen. Uh, reopen public comment for a minute to thank you. Lisa, give comments. Yeah, I apologize for my technical failures earlier, um, and I wanted to just make two comments apropos to today's uh, meeting about uh, your the school board's priorities. First, I wanted to thank you for rescheduling the meeting um, to make sure you get this important work done before school starts. I also wanted to thank each and every one of you for all the work you've done over the summer researching where our students are and the trends in the district and talking to parents and 
uh, you know, researching functional school districts around uh, the country to see how they uh, deal with improving academics. So thank you so much for all the hours and hours of work you've already done this summer and for today. Um, specifically, I'm sure you all came over it as you were researching and talking to other school leaders that one approach to um, improving academics is to involve uh, parents and caregivers. And one way that in the literature seems, and speaking to other members uh, uh, in high functioning school districts is to provide uh, yearly, semesterly and weekly syllabi to each, uh, to, to all parents where they can access what is in fact, being taught over the school year, over the semester, and then as scheduling shifts around uh, in a specific week. So parents uh, can assist in their ch children's learning, especially in our low homework environments of the uh, elementary and middle schools. So I would like to, uh, I, I will be anxiously watching what you report and come up with today, but the parents I spoke to and the people across the country some experts, some just uh, other families, other school board members all uh, listed that. And it seemed like, I know you all have read about it and talked to people about it, but that you would consider um, requiring that. And my second point is also apropos to academics. Um, and I'll make it brief because I've gone over my minute, but, um, I think there's a lot of people and our, our uh, Roxbury member just mentioned concerned about the, um, the flooding and the health implications. But most importantly, I think that um, I would like to ask the board to uh, respectfully to reconsider funding a $2 million track in a flood plain um, in this climate where pretty much everyone has agreed that this is not uh, once in a hundred years, it's not a once in a 10 year and people are asking questions about whether it will happen next month in two months next year or what. And $2 million could really go a long way to improving academics in our school district. And I think funding a track on that may in fact even run into legal implica implications because it is in the flood hazard zone. Um, and I would like to ask you all to consider revisiting two million plus dollars for a track in a floodplain. Thank you for your time, and thank you, thank you for addressing um, the academic issues and make finally making academics one of the three priorities in our school district. Thank you, and I look forward to a really great year. Thanks, Lisa. All right. Yeah. No way. Um, all right, so we're going to get started with the retreat part of our meeting. And um, for those of you who have the document that Anna sent around with the agenda that included times in it, please ignore those times because those <laughs> times <laughs> were, are old. Um, I have an updated one in front of me. And that also being said, um, I welcome assistance on timekeeping. <laughs> so I'll try and remember to say, oh, we're going to spend 20 minutes on this chunk of whatever. And so, and I'll try and keep my eye on the clock, but I also love a backup. So it, anybody else who wants to also keep their eye on the clock so that something stays 20 minutes that I um, appreciate that uh, because we have a lot to get through um, by noon. And I heard Libby say, as we were getting started, she has a meeting at noon, so we want to let Libby get to her meeting uh, on her next meeting. <laughs> in this room. In this room. <laughs> so we, all have to, we don't really have a choice. <laughs> uh, and we have a lot to get through. What, once again, that all being said, um, we have, Jim and Libby and I have prepared, um, kept in mind that perhaps we will run over or not complete this full agenda uh, by 12 o'clock on the dot. And so have reserved a bit of time at next week's board meeting to carry this over into that if we need to. And as a reminder, we have our first meeting in September has been extended to be four hours to be able to do part two of this retreat, which is the goal setting part. So um, we're keeping all of that in mind. Time we're keeping in mind. <laughs> Can I confirm? So we are not meeting. I feel like I had another hold 
the last week of August. Correct. We are not. Okay. We are And we decided that September 6th was going to start at. Well, uh, we haven't figured uh, that. It's either 4 30 or 5 o'clock. Um, I got responses from everybody, but we okay. haven't made, landed on that yet. Got uh, sorry to interrupt you. No problem. Um, so, uh, even with the time crunch, I didn't want to let go of a warm up exercise as a way of just getting everybody's voices in the room. Also, we haven't seen each other in a while. So, this isn't going to be any kind of like big crazy thing. But I just thought, let's go around the room and just do a quick check in question. Um, so saying just very briefly, how are you? Um, and um, one favorite memory you have from your education, your years as a student, any year as a student, any part of being a student. And because I'm making you do this, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I like it when the sun's shining. So I'm glad the sun's back out today. Um, and... I, oh, um, I did give this one a little thought. Uh, when I was a junior in high school, I uh, my social studies curriculum was all centered around a national competition called We the People. And I got to be, um, and part of that was to compete against other um, groups of students from other schools around the state of Wisconsin. And we won. <laughs> which means we got to go to Washington, D.C. and compete against students across the country. I actually can't remember how we fared at, at the national level, which well, means you clearly didn't win. win. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just a really amazing experience to participate in that with my classmates. And it helped the history of our country sink in for me in a way that I don't think it would have um, otherwise. So that was a, that was a fun I'm part of being a student for me. Uh, how am I? I'm doing well. It's been a weird summer. Uh, it's good <clears> to see <throat> everyone, uh, but definitely between the, the flooding, I've had great family trip to Ireland, came back, Montpelier washed away, um, kind of been dealing with that, and also, you know, just uh, have to admit it's a little, a little worrisome, kind of thinking about, you know, how the sound survives in the flood zone and the narrow climate change. Um, uh, memories from school. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the US history thing. Um, I had, just cause I, I think it really showed the power of education. I had uh, an amazing AP US history teacher, uh, both by uh, sophomore and junior year. Um, who I, I grew up in a like, pretty conservative suburban Illinois high school. And he was you know, kind of a big time lefty and um, really kind of showed me uh, different ways of thinking and different ways of thinking about social issues and the world and our place in it. And uh, very important person in my life. So I will go with that. I'm doing well, also worried. Um, about time change and stuff, but I've been we've been kayaking and mountain biking, and I have a huge construction project at home that I'm taking on, which is obsessed, but it's good. <laughs> um, but for school, we read Othello, I think I was a junior, and um, I just really loved it, and a lot of kids were having trouble and I was able to kind of be helpful for other kids and I really emulate Iago's capacities but not his strength. I would, I would love to be able to use his capacities to empower people instead of how he uses them so I just really liked reading like that and mm -hmm. be good. So I'm okay. I would be lying to you if I didn't say if it's raining at night, I can't sleep because I'm thinking about whether or not my school is flooding again. Um, but last night I took it p.m. at p.m. I recommend it. It's not you right out. <laughs> so last night I got a good night's sleep. And I'm just going to point out that it's been raining for us every night. Oh, I'm yeah. aware. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why the Advil p.m. last night yes. because I haven't had much sleep. Um, and but I'm, I'm fine. 
And uh, schools are my happy place. So it's hard to pick one actual moment. My dad was a um, sixth grade teacher and he was my sixth grade teacher. And he was very, he was very at, active in the community. So I was always in a school growing up, always. My mom worked a lot. And so I was always with my dad. And uh, so um, it's hard to pick one, but I could say when he was my sixth grade science teacher, which he was, uh, he was also everybody's coach, like everybody called him dad. <laughs> um, I remember one time we must have all like been asleep or something in sixth grade in science. And he and all of a sudden I look up and my dad is standing on top of his lab table in the front of the room screaming, wake you people, and then jumped on the floor and slammed the front of my desk. Um, and it, like all of us just busted out laughing. And and I can, I just, he was just so, he was such a good teacher. So it's probably why I chose the path I chose. But um, yeah, I can't, schools are my happy place, which makes it hard to see tubes and ET like things going mm -hmm. through one of them right now. So, um, but I can say that's one of my fond memories of my daddy and my sixth grade science. That all makes sense now. <laughs> a lot that's come together. Um, yeah, also feeling just the existential dread of this summer and also have been having flood mares. Um, and, you know, we manage a small farm on our property and it's been a tough summer um, for survival for animals and plants. Um, it has no part of our farm has been unaffected. Um, so, yeah, so it's been it's been tricky and challenging. Um, and but generally we're doing great all things considered um yeah it's this is a fun exercise you know sometimes i feel like i don't remember anything <laughs> it feels like very very long ago um so it's been fun to kind of uh just drum up some old memories it was funny the first thing that came to me was in preschool when a teacher came across the room with a giant tower of jello jiggling on a plate and because of its mobility i was i was convinced it was alive <laughs> and ran into a corner and him and I've never eaten jello. <laughs> um so don't you're, 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 not, you're, not, yeah, you're yeah. not missing out on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um but then uh, I I flipped to uh yeah sixth grade when my our entire grade took a trip to Cape Cod for like an immersion studies week in the ecology of uh, the seacoast in Cape Cod. And it was just like an incredible bonding experience, mm -hmm. you know, like living in bunk houses with your classmates and just really getting to have like an enriching experience of doing hands, you know, a lot of, especially back in the eighties, a lot of school was spanned and deliver. And the, <clears throat> the idea that we had just this opportunity to like, you know, really learn in, in an outdoor classroom and super engaged. For me, who wound up. Um, and I do remember my ninth grade biology teacher who ruled with an iron fist. She was the biology mother. And she had such high ex expectations of every kid who came through that. And the curve was, woof, like her test, and I, you know, it was hard to do well in her class, but she just, um, just held this love for biology in, in the jars and the, uh, it, and so it was just a really powerful class and she definitely inspired my path. Um, I am doing fine. It's like that question is just really terrible this summer, but I'm doing fine by all outward measures. And then it's just like such a heavy, sad summer in on so many levels that I'm not even going to talk about it because I'll get too emotional, but um, school, school, I kind of feel the same way, like this, like blur of like, wait, what do I remember? What are my favorite memories? But um, the things that pop out are the things that I'm sensing a theme a little bit that were like very hands-on applicable to the real world. Um, I remember my middle school math teacher and I went to Montpelier schools. So this guy's long gone, but um my middle school math teacher did an, an activity with everybody where you got like a certain amount of money and you invested it. <laughs> and then you like tracked it on, um, you know, in the newspaper, because that's where things were done back then <laughs> with like how your, how your stock was doing. And so you could buy as many shares of whatever you wanted with the money that you had. And then you were like tracking how you did. And the winners went to 
Um, I, I didn't win, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the winners went and did like a field trip to the stock exchange, which was pretty cool and like high stakes. Um, so that stands out to me. I also want to give a shout out to like Mary Mello, who was my kindergarten teacher, who's like the most quintessential, perfect, like vision of a kindergarten teacher that you can imagine. And she, I still remember my room here. Like that's how much it like imprinted on my memory. And then my daughter ended up having her as her kindergarten teacher. It was just like this beautiful full circle moment um, for all of us. And I also wanted to give a shout out to Karen McCadden, who was uh, like, one of these like new young teachers that came in in the 90s you had Karen yes <laughs> she was awesome. she's not even that much older than me like when I oh, thought I'm about it sure <laughs> um but yeah she had a lot of energy and she chose really great uh relevant reading material for um for us teenagers and she did this one thing that I still remember where I'm like you know and when I went through my teacher training I was like she's a genius like we all thought we were getting away. She said that for tests, she would allow us to one index card, anything that you wanted to write on it, you could write on it, but it was like, you know, that's you writing the stuff on it is <laughs> you actually studying for the test and remembering the stuff that's written on it. And then in the end, you don't actually need the index card. But I was like, you know, we all thought, Ooh, we're really getting away with something here. We get to like cheat on the test and bring our index card in. And actually it's just her way of getting us to study for our tests. Anyway. I'll be I'll be quick yeah I'm the same I, I this I don't think there are words to describe what we've all been going through and gone through especially coming off COVID to then go right into this I just I'm sort of seeing it through the eyes of my teenage daughter and they're somehow the most resilient crew they just lost their jobs their <laughs> hangouts they finally get to hang out together and then they have to hang out differently and they somehow figure it out and it's pretty impressive um mm -hmm. The things that instantly came to mind are like a couple of specific teachers. Like I don't like a lot of school is sort of a blur, but I had one teacher my freshman year in high school, my first like high school English class. And he was this massive wrestling coach, football coach, teacher who was our English teacher. And he got us super excited about Beowulf. Like he was so into it. And it was like that, that resonated because like I'm, my happy place is reading a book. Like I'm, I, that's my place. And that like really solidified that for me and like that books could be everything and were like the path to everything. And then in college, I had a very similar teacher who was very non-traditional, this old guy who'd been like a reporter for the post and like had all these great inside stories about journalism. And so I ended up getting my degrees in English and journalism. <laughs> and I think it's because of those two teachers and they're just, their passion for it. Really Even they don't want to <laughs> Um, yeah, very similar uh, sentiments to what y'all have shared. Um, there, the one word that that has come up over and over again is exponential. Um, a lot of people I work with, a lot of people I'm you know, friends with um, have really yeah been dealing with with pain, um, and it's it's not going to end. Um, and I'm, I think you mentioned in an email early on, like I'm privileged enough that like I live up the hill. Um, even higher than you. So, um, other than a sump pump that get got plugged and I got a little dirty, like I managed to be pretty much outscaped. So there's this like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, survivor's guilt. I don't know what the, the right expression is um, for that. Um, I've pretty much spent my entire life in school. Um, <laughs> my mom was a was a high school biology teacher for forty four years. Um, and I remember when I was like a child spending like mm -hmm. days in class with her. Um, actually, I was just at her house recently um, helping clean out some stuff. And we found pictures from like one of the first years she was a teacher. And and I was like, I remember that classroom. Um, yeah. So it's crazy that my, the first memory I have and the most vivid uh, memory I have of, of school is actually not being in school. Um, my senior year of high school, um, the last quarter of the year, I, instead of going to school, um, I worked at the Bronx Zoo uh, in the reptile house. Um, it was like an alternative um, program that, that most of the people in my, in my senior year did. They just, they got to do something, an internship of something that, that they're interested in. So, yeah. 
I commuted to the Bronx and went to the Bronx Zoo. Did you with, go to a Ted Sizer school? Uh, Is it called Ted Sizer? No. You would, no. You would, no, I went to just a regular old public regular. school. Was, was it a County. PS something? No, no, no it's Westchester yeah. County, so <laughs> um, up, upstate. Um, but yeah, they... And yeah, that's cool. I got work in the nursery with like the baby Chinese alligators and <laughs> spitting cool. cobras. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Which was <laughs> when the, the keeper it was like, here, put these, these safety goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks everyone for sharing. Um, we're just to do a quick recap of how we got here. Um, and how, you know, where we're at in the process. Um, we had the almost year long visioning um, input gathering process facilitated by Nathan Suter of Build Strategies and, and, and the steering committee of community members, teachers, uh, administrators, school board members. And um, that culminated in the, the summary and report that Nathan put together for us and I think had to us by last fall, so almost a year ago now, um, that shared what our community said is the overarching vision of um, what we want for our graduates. And um, from that, the board has done some work to narrow that down into these three priorities of um, closing the achievement gap, uh, which is the focus on academics, um, safety, belonging, and wellness, and um, community communication and engagement. So those are our, our the three priorities that the board has gleaned from the visioning work that um, happened throughout our community. <clears throat> and we're today taking those very broad themed priorities and making them a little bit more specific. Um, so the question that we want to, before we dive into actually doing that, that we want to get clear on as a board is how specific do we want those to read? Um, so that's, uh, we're going to spend the next few minutes talking and deciding that together before we move into, um, the, uh, actual work of kind of writing them. So, um, first as any facilitator has a I dumped this up out of my basement <laughs> from back in the days when I used to do in-person facilitation and I got um, a, a chuckle out of my kids during COVID used these big pieces of paper <laughs> as something that to occupy themselves while I probably needed to be on a Zoom call. And I found this, this was on the first top sheet and, and I don't, it was probably Oliver who now is nine, but at the time was more like six, trying to remember the school, the union elementary guidelines of being safe, kind, and this might be gentle, but then there's also love in there. So anyway, I could not throw that away. I had to bring that in because it's, it's a good, because it's adorable and a good reminder of what we're all here to do, which is your kids are much lovelier kids. kids than my kids. I had mine made a square jar for adults. <laughs> and, well, and it said on the bottom, superintendents especially. <laughs> so that's much nicer than my children. <laughs> <laughs> mine are still holding on to the warm, fuzzy feeling. Anyway, so that was the top sheet. This is what I did with the next sheet, which is just to give us a couple of examples of what they might look like. Um, uh, before, um, well, I think it was early July, Jill, Scott, and I actually managed to find a time and get together and do a little prep with the first priority. And we um, wrote what we are calling sort of how we define the first priority of closing the achievement gap. And then we mm -hmm. got into some very specific kind of like into the details, maybe gritty. So I just pulled these out of that as an example of what a broad, this could be our indicator of success. We could just stop here and say, this is what success looks like to us. We could also go to the level of getting to a more like nitty gritty detail level. So I only pulled these out as a way of just giving us something to picture for this conversation to answer this question of how, how broad or specific do we want these indicators to read? So with that, I'll send it to you. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm sitting.
Okay. Or I can talk about community and communication, community engagement. Yeah, go for it. Um, so we had a lot of phone conversations. That's what we were able to do. And then the events of the last few weeks did not help. Um, <clears throat> but um, well, let's see where I put this window. Um, Um, so one of the thoughts that we had <clears throat> was um, to come up with a measurable goal that we may be able to actually measure um, was to use the summary tool that you created with Anna, which I think is fantastic, um, to see if we can basically put a button on the tool that people click, um, see how much people are using it, and, and then set a goal to increase the engagement with the summary tool um, by some number, 10% over the course of a year, 15% over the course of a year. I don't know. One of my thoughts was to put a, to put a question like, do you approve of the board's work for this meeting? Yes, no. And then we're measuring clicks, not the yes, no. We, of course, are very, we want to see a yes answer to that question. But just the number of people that respond to a question like that, I don't. And the other piece of um, the community engagement goal, it, it, it kind of brings me back to that Title I policy that came out where there's only so much the board can do in a sense. There's a lot that the administration can do. There's a lot that building principals will do and, and thinking about how the board can kind of accumulate the data that comes from all these different levels of engagement that are, that are already happening. There's a lot of engagement that happens. The board can't necessarily, <clears throat> you know, facilitate all of that, nor should it. But all of that engagement is part of the district's goal of engaging families and getting engagement with families to be where our community wants it to be, which you know, I think we 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 do a good job of it. I think that coming out of the pandemic, um, it's a lot of growth that's been happening. Um, so I don't know if that's you know, sort of the goal school board meeting summaries will have a 15% increase in independent views from the some time uh, as measured by responses to school board meeting summaries. Views of school board meeting summaries will be measured by a button that asks, do you approve of the work of the board for the that meeting? I don't know if that's a good approach, um, but to come up with something measurable um, is challenging. Mm -hmm. But that would be data. That would be hard data that would be measurable. I don't know if that meets the inclusive or equitable aspects of the SMARTY goals. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how to link that in. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we discussed was um, figuring out ways to make sure that board activities are less in the work day, and that helps engagement from the community. It's hard to do things from eight to four, um, and a lot of work is done from eight to four, and I don't, you know, everything's warned. <clears throat> Those are tough times to engage the community. Um, that's why board meetings are at 6.30. Um, that's kind of what we have, not a lot. So it sounds like you went more to the specific. Kind of. Uh -huh. I thought, how how can we make this measurable? It's really tough to gauge how successful we are mm -hmm. um, in our community outreach. And I don't know if that's a, that's a good approach. I don't know if that's the right question to ask or if it even should be a question. Yeah. Maybe it's click if you received this. You know, it could be anything. And the getting more like 
this is not just wordsmithing it, but working and refining it. That's what we're going to do further into this meeting. Yeah. We're right now just trying to decide. So that gives us some guidance. Like, should we be going that specific or do we want to stay more broad? So that's what the conversation is right now. What do others think? Should we get to that level of specificity or stay more, more broad? My thought for the indicators is this should be relatively broad. And then I think we can set for a couple of reasons. One, I think, we can set goals in the next meeting for like shorter term time frames that are a little more specific about what we could see maybe in the next two to three years on something like you know taking your example you know every student reading their highest potential in terms of you know reading and literacy and then we can maybe set a couple of year goals so that way as as what we feel meets that indicator in 24 25 you know 25 26 I think the other reason is specific indicators tend to slant towards things that we can quantify. And I think there's a lot of there's a lot of things we want to try. Because if, if you slant towards things that you can quantify, those tend to be the things you look for. And kind of like in the behavioral realm, it's a lot easier to quantify the acting out behaviors, you know. How many reports do we have with bullying? How many things do we have on the dashboard? It's a lot harder to find, for instance, the high achieving student who's suffering from anxiety and depression and has it really well. Um, and some of those you know, other indicators that I think we really want to pay attention to that are harder to find and harder to quantify. And if we have, if we slant towards things that we can quantify, I'm afraid that that's going to be what we look at and we say, yeah, you know, or, you know, no one's acting out in class. Everyone behavior is great. Everyone's, everyone's feeling, feeling good and belonging and that might not be the case. Um, so I'm just as, as per huge getting a little mixed up with, um, so the way that Jim was just talking about indicators and goals, it almost seemed like he had them flipped from what you have listed here, which is indicators are more evergreen goals have a terminus. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was hearing Jim do it in the reverse. No, I was saying the, the indicator is evergreen and it's something that you want to be constant. <clears throat> and then with our goals, we can kind of look to the indicator and kind of like, well, what what goal would give us an idea, say for next year, that we're 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 getting towards this evergreen indicator, or we're meeting this evergreen? Indicator. And your suggestion is to work on the broader, more evergreen indicator. Yeah. This meeting, yeah. and then work on the more specific goals next meeting. Did I flip it or no? No, I okay. I don't yeah. think okay. I didn't think so either. I agree with that. I think it makes sense starting with the broader, more evergreen goal and then working into the details. Yeah, I I agree. And um, I like your point, Jim, about um, quantitative, um, not only looking at quantitative data to inform, um, there are very effective ways of capturing qualitative um, I'm not a qualitative researcher, and so I don't know how, but th there there are ways to do that. And and I think what you're saying is important to keep in mind and include those qualitative measures as well as quantitative, because they're, they're equally as important because they show different things. Yeah, what came up for me is the, uh, I think it was a TED talk of the, da the danger of a single story that like, you know, quantitative data can give you one story, but then there's this whole missing piece. And I do think, you know, we've gotten uh, a mix of types of data. You know, we're now getting data out of the kind of data apparatus. But when I think about student presentations that we get, I feel like that's where we feel like a lot of the qualitative piece, we're seeing kind of the, you know, the pedagogy sort of roll out before us and see what kids are experiencing. So I think, you know, when we think about methods for getting uh, the qualitative feedback of how well our district is doing. It's those kind of presentations. Like I think, you know, we've been at, what do you all want to see? What do you want to hear? And not only data, but I think the presentations from different programs and getting students in the room. I know the article that it was sent around is like, how are our students doing? <laughs> the best way for us to know that is to ask them and to hear from them. So kind of how we weave in those, you know, presentations to the board that also really includes students. Um, so 
I like the idea. I think it makes sense to have indicators broad and then, but I do think, you know, and I think we've been striving to, uh, you know, get to this place, but having that quantitative piece in there also. Um, and I think it would also be helpful. I think setting that those quantitative bars will also be, um, we're going to need to rely on some baseline data. You know, if we want to see a 30%, you know, improvement, you know, then we probably want to know where is our current baseline. So working with Libby and Mike and whomever else from, you know, from leadership to help us kind of make sure that what we're asking is, um, is just informed, you know, by what the, what the current data is. So sounds like we could probably move into broad indicator land. <laughs> Yeah, I I am okay with that. And I agree that indicators should be evergreen. I think the one thing that I disagree with Jim on a little bit is that um, I think it's possible to be evergreen and specific, but I'm also okay being overruled. Yeah. This is a this is a team of people working together. So anyway, I think I agree with that. And I agree with that too. So um, one other thing that when Jim was speaking was like, and I think behavior is a good... Um, a good example of this, that it can tend to sort of operate like the data collection can tend to operate on like a deficit model yeah. where it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going into the system to report in bad behavior. Right. Yeah. Right. And so I think it would be nice to sort of be thinking about how do we avoid that, yeah. that pitfall? Like yeah. how do we, how can we build in ways to track positive um, progress also? And also keep in mind other variety of stakeholders. So not just like, you know, well, with academic achievement, you know, not just one indicator, but also these other qualitative measures. So not just like SBACs or whatever they're called now. Cognia. <laughs> Cognia. Right. Cognia. Or, or star, you know, renaissance test, you know, not just one, but like a variety. Right. Um, so, and that we're hearing from a variety of stakeholders because parents feel differently than their students, then the teachers, then the testing, you know, it's like cross-referencing stakeholder input. Yeah. So it sounds like we're going to go more broad with the indicator and get to the specificity when it comes to goal setting time. So, mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the plan for today. Let's we're gonna um, start by breaking up into small groups, the same ones that did the, we're starting out in the um, same ones that we that were sort of our prep groups. So for closing the achievement gap, that's me, Scott and Jill. Uh, for belonging, safety and wellness, that's Jim, Emma and Kristen and communication and community engagement. Uh-oh, that's just Rhett. That's Rhett. <laughs> Maybe Rhett and Lydia. Or can we? shift some yeah. oh, Libby floating. Yeah, Libby, we, I would love to have Libby float to give mm -hmm. uh, her expertise to each group. So why don't I join Rhett and then Scott and Jill, the two of you can do any more work if you want to refine the one that we worked on when we were. Is there a document in here that we should be working from that has all of our different graphs? There is the one that um has probably the captured the most of the like work since we set the vision is the MRPS vision approach values. That one has, yeah, that one has um <clears throat> yeah, there's not much in there. Right. The that's the one that we're gonna put what we write today. Right. I mean you could work in that one, I think, if it's uh editable, which we can make it inevitable. The one that I was going to point your attention to for information on conversations that have happened up to this point is the one that's in that's titled Draft Priorities, Questions, and Indicators. Thank you. So we'll break up into those small groups. We'll have about, um, let me get my updated agenda here, um, 20 minutes to get a draft written down. And then we'll come back to the big group to present that. The um, whole group will offer suggestions or questions. And then when we break into small groups, there'll be slightly different small groups the second time around so that it's different perspectives looking at the same words. So, but we'll get to that after the big group. For now, you go to 
Scott and Jill, Jim, Emma, and Kristen, and Rhett and I working on our different priorities. How long? How long? For 20 minutes. Uh, can you forward that email? I was just, I'm trying to find it, but it's buried. Um, there was an email that you had sent us with um, VSBA sort of suggestions. Suggestions. Oh, sure. I will find that. Mm -hmm. And I would like to use that as a starting yeah. point, but I couldn't find it. So that one had, that was from Sue, I think. So sorry, I'm, so the, the document, the draft Got priorities, yeah. questions, and indicators, is that one of the things that, that the three of us came up with, Liv? Then. Uh, no, because I couldn't edit that one at the time. The one that we where we came up with is in is actually in the minutes from our meeting. So I can, um, thank you. <clears throat> And it's also, so that's the minute, the meeting that was 627-23. Okay. I think you can find it on the school board website okay. or our page of the website. And then, oh, here yeah. it is. Yeah, I yep. got, it's in the packet too for today. Because it was oh, yeah, right. the consent right. agenda. Right. Okay. So Emma, Kristen, and Jim, why don't you take that corner of the table? And by the end of these 20 minutes, so about 940, ideally you've got something either written down on paper or typed on. You can open a brand new Google Doc if you need to. Don't worry about that. It's typed up that then can be shared with the big group. So ideally written down so we can like um, put it up there. I have more of the big sheets if you want them. And um, it doesn't have to be the final product. That's the whole idea of today is we're going to iterate on this for the next few hours. So, um, yeah. Thank you. We've got. Um, Here's some. Can you say. It was really helpful guiding questions. 627. It was part of the package. Yeah. 26. It's a. So we had kind of yeah. a definite yeah. of yeah. you're moving to us and then our indicators. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. And I will I mean, to you, Brett. Do this yes. and drafting prior to the meeting. Yes. So yeah. we have able to like be thinking. I mean, I've been thinking about it and sort of like the odds. It sounds yeah. like for him to be reminded yeah, maybe I'm misunderstanding what I was doing where it seems different. Yes, different. Yes, 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 because I don't think we want to not, I mean, I think I liked what we took yeah. with because it's like, like Chris was saying, it's based on a starting point. So that's something you can actually measure mm -hmm. and aspire to. So I don't think they would go away, right? I mean, aren't we always going to need to... Well, we sort of said that this was, uh, yeah, it totally yeah, could be, you know, more the industry, but I basically, it was like, right, it would be, my I think I might have started in the wrong direction because uh, we're, we're not supposed to be looking at this, no? right? Okay. We're, we, I think what I heard in this discussion was we're going to start broad okay. for this next 20 minutes. Okay. And, and then I went right to the narrow or the specific. So that's my bad. Um, so, 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 so,
less financial and if i remember correctly we this definition from our meeting was what we the three of us defined as so the, the we were tasked with coming up with a goal sorry an indicator of closing the achievement gap and our indicator is that every student is reaching their highest potential identity so then if that's the case what are we supposed to be doing right now All right. <laughs> um, I, i'm really glad i did have some coffee because for some reason i thought we'd have some here and i even brought my <laughs> Because then the goals would be like, well, how do we? Well, 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 right. So if this is a goal, right? That the goal is every student is reaching their highest potential. And an indicator of the success would be case pieces. Um, yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah, no, please do. We're bumbling. So we had come up with the definition of what it means to close the achievement gap is like our goal, right? So every student reaching their highest potential, regardless of identity or socioeconomic status, and that they have equitable access to the opportunities they need and desire to succeed. I just I just put it my challenge is the first part of that. Okay. So every student is reaching their highest potential. Who gets to decide that? Mm. And are we talking about them living? We don't need to knowing adults, and they decide it for them. About and right. so that is a, a biased principle okay. to get. And so, so I, right? I put that in okay. So that would be my so only my so only so question really around that. Do you have a different way to frame that or so what we're what we sort of as a leadership team yeah, there are so use many, consistently yeah. is every I'm student has any questions. choice available to yes. them upon graduation. I mean that is kind of like it kind of puts the garbles out of your mouth, but but it's the idea that you want to go to a four-year school, you're going to have skills to do it. Oh, you want to go to a two-year technical school, mm -hmm. you're going to have skills to do it. You want to travel the world for a year, you're going to have the skills to do it. Mm -hmm. um, any choice is available to them. So, I don't know if we do it. Like, we did a, a big, big thing at our leadership retreat around that. Like, okay, so let's see. Say a kid wants to go to a four-year school. So say a kid wants to go to technology. Say a kid wants to go to a split up in the group. We found things like, well, every kid needs financial literacy. And any choice they make financial literacy, why is that not a graduation requirement for us? Like, so it was enabling us to open up those big questions. Okay. Right? Well, then college, for your college should be a choice for any student then algebra two okay. and multilingual yeah. some sort of yeah. language uh, right. is necessary yeah. are those graduation you know like right. are we there so then okay. those become so the indicators or the, so yeah. the yeah. more specific thing from the right looking at what, right, right. Yeah. that's okay yeah something yeah. 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 to define yeah. what those things are so yeah. Yeah. while the we haven't matter. figured out a, an idea a beautiful way that could go on a t-shirt say that idea but that's what we're going through that any child has the confidence but the skills is necessary to make any check the You know, there's um, things like that. Different ideas, the, you know, either either a communicator. So it takes the that takes the ownership out of a child's potential away from adults. Well, it's it's also like what I find about this. Um, so, do we need to write this as so it's a goal as when they leave, which is not the same as like a goal of each year they're getting X Y Z. No, but you need so so if you want that back, that means we have to define what high levels of learning mean, right? Like for so. Um, the thing about at the high practice. school level, mm -hmm. it means um, that everybody had some sort of writing and reading proficiency, mm -hmm. uh, usually around at the 10th grade level, right? Mm -hmm. like grade level, right? Um, so 
they can write future essays they can critically do think that. they can compare you know, past kind of complex ideas you know they can you will do that that like all of those things are important and that's all like 10th and 11th grade English, like, 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 English kind of skills but we can right. name those better mm-hmm. right um the third grade yeah. piece is an um, indicator for yeah. literacy yeah. Yeah. at the elementary school right we don't want to be have that be our only right Right. Piece it's because right. that lets off a whole major component of our <laughs> of our school district, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, it certainly is an influencing factor according to research, and so is ninth grade. Too, okay. So, what kind of ninth grade indicators do we have? Right, for um, yeah. 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 right? Yeah, that ever so around, that, particularly algebra. right now we're still saying literacy, but okay. that's it's sort of like. Am I making sense there? there? Yeah. Does do you, you or the that. does and your and leadership team have something for the ninth grade like that you? No, that's what we have to get more specific about. Right, that's getting more specific indicator. Right, that's not. But that also gets into the quality of the stuff that here's the thing that you were talking about because ninth grade is more of the belonging. For and so, like, qualitatively, so I how are like nice graders feel like they belong in the culture um, at MSF, MHS, right? Something that um, how do they feel in terms of expectations for themselves as a learner? How do, mm-hmm. And how are they doing in my so, so How are they, they doing in the nice grade literacy work? What are we having them do? We still could go right. to this broad, you know, just indicate we did how we have, have say, one of our possible indicators be about um, percentage of students who report their teachers and administrators have high expectations of them. Yeah. It doesn't say ninth grade specifically. Yeah, but... I go back and forth with the like or the specificity of that piece because yeah. my my first reaction to it is well that's the that's the leadership to to make those specific goals, specific okay. goals right? Like, so that's why you post money. Right. And at the same time, so you all need that. you all need to put a stamp on it. Yeah. yeah. So I go back and forth yeah. on like, so, like how to how specific that should be. Yeah, I mean I right. I would hope that whatever we decide is, is in alignment with what, what the leadership team is saying. And if not, that's where the like the hard conversation is um, And at this point, we're not focusing on the specific, right? So I'm listening to what you're saying and I'm trying to translate that to like a very broad statement. And I really like one thing you said. Up here. There are a number of things in there, and, and I'm trying to pull out language to to be in like high level goal. And you said something like every student has the confidence and skills to make the choice, and then that's a piece that I'm, I'm trying to like close the loop. Make make what choice? So so if you think of choices that you should yeah. they graduate, right? The choice I don't want kids to make is that they're going to go work in job design. Some kind of one of the traits. I want them to have the education and the skills and the skills to say that's not good enough for me. But I want to really work in the traits. So I know that I need to be a you know I need to be an apprentice. What is you know I need to have customer service experience. I need to have Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I'm making that choice, and I have the skills and confidence to be able to go get that with me. I'm sure. Right. If, and I also want any child to be able to go to a boarding college. Should that be a choice? Yeah. Not from the Harvard or Castle Right. It could be any boarding school, but there are requirements of proficiency and confidence that you have to have in order to be successful. Right. To be able to sit and read a long text. You know, at the most basic kind of thing you have to like, be able to like, stomach yeah, sure you know five to six great, but literally like if you think about a blood course for right. four years right. college like so you're reading six steps at a time yeah, right so yeah. are it's like, it's right. Right. So we preparing kids like, like, well like the electrician yeah. you know the yeah. those kids they have to do apprentice they have to read these huge technical vocabulary yeah they have to take tests on those they yeah so they have to know how to do their own budget if they're going to do this yeah so whichever choice they make 
piece of work, um, the special educators, and then kind of my bottom line would be that that choice is one that leads to some sort of learning, more learning in the future, mm -hmm. right? That they have the, the ability to be able to do that, that they can support themselves mm -hmm. eventually, and they can still benefit the community, mm -hmm. right? Their life. Um, so, like this is incredible. So, what is that? You know, those are our choices. Those are our choices. Mm -hmm. We want all of us to be able to do those things. There are things that are important in school in order to get there. Yeah. 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 So, is that different than closing the achievement gap? Um, like, the resources there. they're kind of different beasts right um, i mean they're they're the same thing but yeah and then so another way you yeah, could look at it is that the, you yeah, that at mrps the, yeah, the um, student outcomes the are, not, the are not predicted by mm -hmm. identifying factors well, such as mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. status mm -hmm. race ethnicity all the kind of typical ones that we look at Right. Um, that's well, another way like, to look at it, yeah, and that's and more of an educational equity. Right. Like Can you say that again? Yeah. So at our yes, um, no, yeah. or um, you know, student yeah, outcomes cannot so be like, predicted surveys, based on uh, you know, identifying factors. Yes, you know, that we don't have to in terms of how they want Which gets at opportunity gaps. Opportunities, they want to access and they're going to their sources, you know, quantitative. And they have access to the opportunities they need, a desire, I thought we took that out, Um, they need to succeed beyond graduation or something like that. Because right now, you can pick and identify, like, right? That is a... Them. That's a predictor of success in our district right now, or lack thereof. Uh, I think we can say more eloquently, but the, uh, yeah, for people who are struggling, that they feel they have, yeah, have resources. So that's just another way to look at it from an equity system. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. It's interesting, like Nathan's report, that was, that was part of a question. And it seems to me it that it's the opposite, and right? Socioeconomic and status and identity should not be predictors of yep. success, mm -hmm. or are not. Yeah, mm -hmm. it would be our goal. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. and, you know, their need for knowing where those resources are improves and that's how kind of you have to be in that process. Not like when most bullies are trying to say, here's how we get in. I mean, there's, they're both similar. They're, similar. they're, like, they're saying they're similar. Like, right. 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 Which is, which is, yeah. But it's like three more minutes that it's longer. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is not good, but mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. incredible. You use, and we don't have to have a final grasp to it. Okay. I think we're going back. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just thinking through a lot. Um, you guys have a tough one. It is, yes. Yeah. It's about getting it's good to iterate, right? right. I agree. Because now we can do that, right? So, okay. So, so our leadership team, like, when we are but also, I'll read it to you. MRPS ensures every student experiences a deep sense of belonging. Discover the relevance and envision one of those features, enabling them to rise above their biggest dreams. Through a commitment to excellence, collaboration, and empowering partnerships, we cultivate an environment where students thrive academically, socially, and emotionally, and it's equipping them to excel in an ever evolving world and make a lasting positive impact on society. Wow. So it's kind of like an over. Yeah, that and all the rest of these fit under that. Yeah. yeah. Certainly together. Yeah. Um, which another change or better since you hear is like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, what we, yes. that's what we came up with. Yes. Do we want to do that? We can do that. And we'll work it. You know what I mean? And thumbs up. Families can be brought a little bit. Like, yes. does that mean biologically related? Just so it's so just a limitless future. Right. Right. Um, right. Um, Harp on a little bit. Uh, uh, like, like, we're we're uh, thinking about the student and staff. What does that mean? So we first talk about how the behaviors, what behaviors do the leadership team need to do? What behaviors do the teachers need to have? What behaviors do the students need to have? Okay. Okay. And I feel like that. Those things are like, oh, timer. That's our time. Um, okay, and so Nikki, yeah, yeah that's actually in oh, that's in yeah, that's, that's, that's maybe the thing. Did you guys then get into like yeah. measures of We're that? Like we had a measure for hearing uh, third grade, yeah. 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 we had measure yeah. for yeah. high expectations. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. I don't know. Students who close their um, achievement gap and move out of special education services. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, chronic absenteeism. I think that goes by okay. nature and by limits to realistic capacity. Mm -hmm. Really do need to focus on students. Is there a way to measure or I like talk to kids a year after they grad? Like, is there like a, you know, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Because that would help sort of quantify, um, did, we, can I, did we set them up that they, they, do they feel like they have the tools they need or do they um, have a plan or I don't know, some sort of... Emotionally safe? Is that what you're saying, you're recommending? So, no, All right, Emma and Kristen. Emma and Kristen. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a final draft. Uh, but I do have to cut you off. Okay. That <laughs> means a good conversation is happening. Exactly. And I'm sorry to stop it. It's okay. But you can come back to it. Thank you. It's not forever. <laughs> um, sure. Wrong document. All right, so here we're going to do brief presentations from each small group just to uh -oh. put out there what you got so far. And then the board, if there's any like small suggestions or questions that will help prompt thinking for the next small group. So we've got three minutes to just say out loud what you've got so far, and then seven for questions and feedback. And we'll start with our academic achievement gap friends. I'm going to also try and write it really big just here so that it's yeah, yeah, and then you can on the wall and easy to here. see. Can we put oh. the draft into the MRPS Vision Approach Values Priorities draft? Does that make sense? So that everybody can everyone, can everyone edit that thing? one? Yeah. Like sure. Yeah. And there's that I can't spell the word achievement. It's the really only one. <laughs> The I before E gets me every time. <laughs> um, and is that one that, I think that one was in the board packet. So it is a public document. Anybody can yep. see it too. Yeah. Okay. The only thing is that in the board packet, I believe it's a PDF. So I don't know. So people can't watch us do it in real time, but we could update it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but if board members want to access it, the link in the agenda, I believe goes to the yep. board document. And I see a bunch oh, of us in yeah. there. So Scott and Jill, are you able to drop in the draft that you've got into the mission vision? Oh, yeah, I'm it's, 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 That's okay. That's okay. We want, that's wait, what we want right now. The mission vision one, not the draft priorities questions. And Correct. We want the one that's vision approach values priorities. That's where we want you to put it. And it would be under the priorities and indicators of progress in that section. Okay. Yep. I'm going to drop that up in the leadership team with them and the mission vision. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to like both figure that out and report out to you guys. Um, All right. Well, can I start by reading it? And then maybe yeah. meanwhile, I'll try to figure out. Now I can't even figure out where I wrote it. There we go. Maybe. Okay. So our group was um, originally it was Mia, Scott, and myself. And um, today we had myself, Scott, and Libby helped us with this as well. So our draft from pre-flood, um, we wanted to just sort of define and, and, and set the goal for what it means to close the achievement gap. So we had written out every student is reaching their highest potential regardless of identity or socioeconomic status, and they have equitable access to the opportunities they need and desire to succeed. So Libby was helping us reframe sort of rather than every student is reaching their highest potential, which is still sort of a measure and, and, and bias towards the adults setting that, but rather that the students leave equipped and reflecting that they are equipped for whatever opportunities they want to pursue afterwards. So we're working on framing that. Um, we, had, we had started to draft some indicators when we got together last month about um, there's a couple of sort of key touchstones in third grade and ninth grade, it sounds like, of when you sort of want to take that temperature on how, um, how students are doing, because that can really help be a future predictor. So um, as you articulated here, one of our first ones was 90% of all third graders, regardless of identity or socioeconomic status, end the year able to read at or above grade level. 
Um, we do want to set a similar indicator for ninth grade. It sounds like ninth grade is a very important year transitionally, academically, um, and social emotionally for students. So um, maybe we'll be drafting a specific indicator for ninth grade as well. Um, we had also uh, identified, especially following our presentations recently about absenteeism, that 10% of all students, regardless of identity or socioeconomic status, are chronically absent from school. 90% um, of students, regardless of identity or socioeconomic status, report that their teachers and administrators have high expectations of them. Um, we also were trying to articulate a, um, a measure of students who are closing their individual gap and can actually move out of special education services. Um, and then we were, we were working on how do we um, measure or how do we provide and guarantee that students have options while they're here that will prepare them for whatever choice they make after graduation. Um, so, you know, regardless of what students wanna pursue when they graduate, there's sort of some standard skill sets that everyone needs. And then we wanna make sure that students leave feeling like, yes, I have the, the skill set and the opportunities I need to pursue whatever that path is after graduation. So a way to measure that might be like the week of senior year, the final week of senior year, checking in with those kids. Because once they leave, it's really hard to sort of get any sort of quantifiable data about did we do, how we do, but like what their plans are, what they feel they're equipped to do to navigate whatever that next chapter is. Um, the leadership team has obviously has also been working on sort of their vision for their, their work and um, use the term limitless futures. So basically, can we set up our students for success, all students um, for success and whatever they pursue? And so we were also sort of trying to articulate how to say student outcomes can't be predicted based on socioeconomic factors, right? That it's not about um, continuing to sort of put those parameters in place, but rather that those, out, those socioeconomic factors that we all know and understand do not predict a student's future and their outcomes when they graduate. Did you have anything else you wanted to? Um, uh, so what I tried to do while Jill was talking was wordsmith that all into two sentences <laughs> <laughs> and it's not perfect but um but this is and Jill hasn't seen this yet so um this is just me going rogue um so I took what Mia Jill and I had originally um crafted and then the the thinking from um the 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 thinking that we had based on feedback from from Libby and and came up with and I can't act, I can't edit the draft um, priorities document so I just requested access otherwise okay. I would paste it in so I'm going to read it. Do you want me to read it? Sure, go okay. for it. So, um, and again, this is a first stab at at um, summarizing what Joan said. Um, Every student has the confidence and skills to choose a limitless path that leads to their continued learning, benefiting themselves and their community. The identity and socioeconomic status of MRPS students are not predictive of academic success. All students shall have equitable access to the opportunities they need and desire to succeed. That's true. That's really, Scott, you do have edited access. Um, vision, approach, values, priorities, and draft. Oh, I'm on draft priorities questions. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yep. Which one are you? Oh, there we go. That was on the wrong draft. There are a lot of documents. <laughs> That's all right. So I will put this totally statement that I just read. Done. If you scroll down to the bottom of the first page, there's priorities and indicators of progress. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of what's currently there, and then you can put what you just read out loud. Yep. Great. Thank you. And then I'll just note that some of those specific ones that Jill mentioned from our pre-work session, those, we maybe would continue to include those in a broad definition of an indicator of success, or maybe we reserve those for goals. That would be good work mm -hmm. for the next small group to figure out, like, maybe we pull out a couple of those because they are, like we've said, such milestones in a student's career, mm -hmm. or maybe we leave this broad and we keep those for goals. So that's a good 
conversation for our next, the next people who are going to work on this in the next small group round. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely hear what Jim is saying that if we set measures, then that maybe that's all we're looking at. But I also don't think we want to not look at what we do have. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's a good point. And then some things like, I mean, I think like, I don't think we should be too restrained in our thinking. Some things like academics, quantitative <laughs> data is very helpful. Uh, you yeah. know, social emotional wellness, it's there, it's a little more fun. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of the absenteeism thing specifically, because yeah. I think the point that was made that really stuck with me was if the student is not here, they're not getting the food, they're not getting the social, they're not How getting the support in school. It sort of, it, it's the it's the tie that allows them access to all that. Yeah. And that's that's measurable, and they're either here or they're not. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, we let's move on to, so we have a, a rough draft. Great. Thanks, team. Let's move on to group two was belonging, safety, and wellness. What's your rough draft? Okay. So belonging, safety, and wellness team currently is Emma, Jim, and I. And um, we had a definition in paragraph format, and then we kind of broke these up into individual uh, indicators. So it reads, um, all students, staff, and families, caregivers feel welcomed in our schools and valued for the unique history, identity, and beliefs that they bring to the school community. The environment, systems, and opportunities that foster student and staff wellness are present, successful, and thriving in our schools. Uh, student, staff, and families, caregivers feel physically, emotionally safe while having a strong sense of belonging and healthy, healthy connections with those in their school buildings. And this was new and it's rough and unfinished, but that resources are available to staff, students, families, caregivers that enable them to access their education. Um, I think something that we were still wrangling with is which of these apply to student, staff, families, and or caregivers and what what um, terminology are we using when it comes to families and caregivers. Um, and, um, and then we also, you know, talked a bit about just, um, from these indicators, the goals within and just how we are able to access the quantitative piece and how we can lean on kind of what is already existing kind of within the data apparatus, but also not wanting to like unnecessarily tax the data machine and the data collecting responsibilities of teachers, leadership, administration, but certainly, um, you know, wanting to ask for things if they are truly important and relevant, like not, not asking for something just because it might be hard or, you know, require a new, you know, system or our way of collecting data, but that we just want to be mindful of, of what we're asking and make sure that it, it's truly important um, and valuable. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, that, so this is what we considered indicators, not moving into kind of measurable quantitative goals and kind of, you know, asking for um, presentations and things like that. So I think that's, yeah, I think that's what I have to say on that. Any initial thoughts or questions on the second priority and the indicators test part? I like in the second, in the first sentence, the value for the unique history, identity, and beliefs that they bring to the school community. Mm -hmm. I like the way you phrase that. All right, so we'll we'll move on to group three. Thanks, group two. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to go? Um, we went backwards from what I talked about, which was that metric to measure engagement to why. Why is this important? And so. Um, we thought it's important because we need to hear from the community in order to make good decisions as a board. Therefore, success looks like a broad and diverse group of stakeholders who contribute to the school community and the decisions of the board, and the board maintains a communication loop with the community about its decisions. And then we're kind of... Can you hear okay, Jim? I can hear. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see it? It's up. I can see it. Yeah, yeah, it's in the diagram. I can see it. He, he just read it out loud so yeah. far. That's all we're at. Yeah, I mean, 
that's why that's the hope we talked about the sort of different stakeholders in the community because it's one thing to communicate with families that have children in the district it's another thing to communicate with folks who don't on how does that look and how do we you know sort of how are we keeping that in mind um we talked about passing the budget but um figuring out how to gauge whether we're communicating well with families or community members who don't have kids in the system in the district is another part of our work um mm -hmm. and so that we wanted to kind of speak to that that objective so this this touches on a question that i had very early on in this process of like are we writing these for the board specifically or are we writing it for the district and so the other two seem to read more like for the whole school the district all of us um like for example the second one belonging safety and wellness this isn't about the board specifically like do people feel welcomed and well like members of the board and people who interact with the board it's written more for student staff and families and caregivers and all of us. Um, and so then this last one now, the way that's drafted is very board centric. Mm -hmm. And and I see, I mean, like evidenced by what Libby is doing right now with the flood information, it's like community engagement is so valued and important for the whole school, from the whole school community. Mm -hmm. And right down to things like we've been hearing a lot from the community around um, you know, wanting more information about their individual students' academic achievements and stuff like that, mm -hmm. struggles. So, like, I was thinking about it more in terms of that type of, like, broader school community and not just the, the work of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of think of it as a yes and, right, if you use that yeah. expression. Mm -hmm. um, and this came up when we were talking with Libby about about um, the indicator of, of closing the academic gap, like, our goals and the goals of the leadership team should be aligned, right? And if they're not, that's when the conversation, you know, should be happening. Yeah. And so I feel like this should, should whatever we decide on should be, be reflective of what we as a board think is important, but should not be, it, it should be an alignment and, and, parallel to every level within the district whether you talk about it a teacher or or a leadership right. like team anyone could accomplish this yeah, indicator exactly. of success yeah mm -hmm. do uh what are other thoughts on that i agree with the with the yes with the yes and mm -hmm. that it should be it should be both yeah. we're talking about you know, broader community engagement you know in, in terms of the board and really kind of taking that that role, um, you know, seriously and prioritizing that as a sort of, you know, all the BSBA materials that we would like, this is a primary function of a board is to be that conduit, yes. you know, so really having that be centralized here, but also the the, the school-based piece also, um, you know, that parents do want to feel welcome in the schools. They do want to know and understand what their um, students are uh, learning and what the expectations are, and they do want access to um, to data and test scores, and that there are systems in place to regularly communicate those those things to families and caregivers. Great. Well, that's good input for the, the next small group that works on this one, just to figure out how to weave that in and have it not be solely. Um, centered around board and board responsibilities. Yeah, good. Any other thoughts on what we've got so far in these drafts before we take a quick break? It was very efficient and effective to break into smaller groups before this, so this much work had already been done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give most of that credit to Kristen because we were not able to break in this small group. <laughs> A small group of one. <laughs> small of many. 
All right. Well, why don't we take a quick break? Let's get back here at folks just need like five minutes, get water, use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So be back in here at about 10 05. And we'll get into different small groups at that point. Bring our attention back to the work at hand. We're going to break into slightly different small groups as we were talking about during the break. We are going to we have one person staying in place with their priorities to maintain some bit of continuity um, from the conversation before, and then bringing in new people to offer those new perspectives, which can, um, and that freshness that can really help refine a draft. So this time around, working on closing the achievement gap is Scott, Emma, and Kristen. And working on belonging, safety, and wellness is Jim and Rhett. And working on communication and community engagement is me and Jill. So, ready? Wait. Oh, oh, yes, question. questions. So, are we still trying to say broad. very broad? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But as we noted in the conversation after the presentation of the first priority, there may be some usefulness mm -hmm. to getting more specific in the academic one. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a good thing for the three of you to discuss. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Do you want me to go over to you? Okay, so you're going to go straight then. Come on over. Stuff and and we have another, we have 20 minutes for this as well. Yeah, my timer. <laughs> Yellow hats are. Sweater yes, do this safely. Huh? And that, that's Sorry. Be safe, be kind, be gentle. Advice. So we can all go on. Exactly. <laughs> With love. <laughs> and we can get through this without so, okay. any injury. Let's go. All right. Jim likes fire on projects. Welcome to the closing achievement gap above committee. The way it's worded right now is very that actually comes up. And more is something that is. I'm like, do we want anybody in the district? Yeah. Oh. And I was right. So let's. But also in our total engine, I feel like we've also discussed right. opportunities. Anybody in the district, including the board. Right. Anyway, uh, I digress. Um, but I, so I guess that what I just did actually is I went yeah, and I just yeah, like, reminds me of because I think you know, the families that are not in um, the academic realm of this jargon. Yes. And then the final one. I think we should have a chat about the families asking for more. Opportunity gap, I think, aware of the slightly kid and, and also yeah, get in their kids. But yeah, to provide so, the you know, I, I think that yeah. comes to mind when I think about uh, our in the community, community engagement and accountability. Yeah, I think currently. Yeah. So the, I think the board's role is to host and facilitate that, right? Like we have to model that not and to provide mm -hmm. that opportunity. That's part of the reason why there are like public volunteer yeah. elected yeah. school board yeah. members, right? Mm -hmm. That is a huge part of why that role exists. That and then also like um, create that opportunity with understand the leadership team, um, right? Uh huh. And sort of yeah. foster that culture at every level. Well, I just added that yeah. as a, yeah on a one-on-one yeah. -on -one teacher to parent, included, student to parent, student. Because I think I yeah. that, like um. So I I don't want to like think it makes more sense, sense to like lay people out. I do think the board has to like yeah, like, but like own that it's and host that and foster that and create those opportunities because right. that's not there is the education yeah. 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 which we are all in. Yeah. So yeah. but at the same time yes. we are not the ones who are right like um, yeah. hosting open house so in the school for example. Mm -hmm. Like exactly. there are yeah. Yeah. we don't want to get outside of our role. Uh, no. If, if it looks good, um good. I, what I, one of the things I'm coming back to is literally like up, further up in the document we have already established under approach communication and engagement. Yes learning requires there's a collaborative and approach, and therefore we intentionally Joe engage all so members of our school, like school community for student success. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, our why here yeah. is that students so are free. more likely mm -hmm. to succeed yeah, it's when there is the engagement of our whole community, like and mm -hmm. therefore success looks like broad and diverse yeah. group of stakeholders yeah. um, contributing to our school, school right. community. I don't, I, I think it makes, I think the place where it kind of breaks down for me a little bit is that I think it makes sense for mm -hmm. the community to give input and yeah. to in, influence, I guess, decisions at the board level, but then it's like, gets a little bit dicier at the teacher level because yes, we want parents to be engaged, but we 
I yeah. don't think it's um, necessary or appropriate for parents to be telling a teacher how to teach. We want to leave that up right. to the professionals. Mm -hmm. right. So um, to I think the umbrella why for it definitely mm -hmm. should center more around student success yeah. than around board decisions. Uh -huh. But then I think Absolutely the way we get agree. into what success but looks wouldn't like. Wouldn't that be the same should, for all of them? Yeah. So that's just a little bit. For all of no. these little bullet points that are just so no, for all three of our priorities. Sorry, 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 sorry. Up quickly. That's okay. Right, that I statement have that, that, that you just said, and I think, think rings true for all of them, um, not just right. The and so I do feel like they're trying to find. So for there's some national like, research that has come out on this, mm -hmm. and that, that would be sort of the bullet statement you're looking for. That's already created. Yeah, got language for us. Okay, I'm just trying to find. Yeah. Where it is, I feel um, like it's, I've put it's that started. environment systems and because yeah, we have to the the role so the I board's role is not only to like right so in like our role there are holds the meetings and I can't doing forums and things like that or but or also to like build that, or build that structure or support that structure in the district so that it's it's part of the culture it's like embedded fact that we're going to be like a practice right that we are budgeting and we are hiring and we are if you need it. You know, providing yeah, feedback for a superintendent means, yeah, right, with that as like a tennis based on that. Yeah, yeah, and show that there are that's what it feels a little bit like. Um, let me read it again. Feel about those resources because we also need to, like, well, it just starts to feel a little like protect, you know, have it be a constructive process and protect our staff from and it's right, you know, what we see in some other states or right micromanagement of you know, of specific skills or by we can't right move forward. The gatekeepers working on the so we have to build a healthy middle school structure for that community engagement, right? This is a big one that I've been seeing. It's like middle school is going right into high school. You know what I mean? And so, like, and then, of course, high school is doing that. Okay. Then I'll th then I'll share my next lesson, <laughs> which is that um, I think some language in here <laughs> could, no, could be um, it, you know not necessarily um, a part of decisions just, at the school level, but yeah. but maybe it's more yeah. like systems are in place, families and caregivers. Um, yeah. um, yeah. 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 Yeah report or whatever that they feel a part of their child's education and or in partnership or in maybe measure yeah support i think a part of their child's education um i have a variety of benchmarks or something like that um Use like measure, monitor, and improve or refine, you know, but that's like. Maybe, yeah, and then the, oh, this yeah. board, instead of board, we say in the district mm -hmm. maintains a communication mm -hmm. with the community about its decisions. Because again, then it's not like, <laughs> district is, or also again, makes it more broad. But I, I just forget, I wouldn't want to make, I and they don't want to sure overburden you know what mm -hmm. our staff. Make, so. I think you're, yeah, we tied up in broad and specific. Yeah, so the broad is that we almost felt like we needed an asterisk um, in that, that, that the, the whole education journey of a child is going to have an opportunity to define that community. You don't feel like caregivers and, 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 and educators. Educator, uh -huh. right? That's Understood. your broad statement. Uh -huh. you know, like, what, what is it that we value? value I think. Yeah. Indicators, your your, your specifics. I maybe use um, more. Yeah. But your specific. So anyhow, that you can have that. a board I'm specific. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, like, and you, you can have a connected to a thought school that I specific thing. You can have, yeah. you know, like that's where you can get so your specifics yeah, that's true. Around board, yeah. Work. I am Emma, what you said because we have was connected this up here as a approach already. Communication and engagement. I don't think we need to rewrite that. It was down very here focused on as like, a, but so then what I hear you saying, Libby, is that yeah, maybe right. it's like not like every step of the way through the district, three right? sentences right. So that are the broke up the very at the board level. This is what success looks like at the school level. This is what this success, is what success looks like and at the classroom. So level, this to is be a bit more like. inclusive of the entire um, like the range yeah. of ages. Yeah. So every student has the um, confidence and skills to support their continued growth. So then like that. Otherwise, we're trying the systems to piece that you're talking encompass about. The systems are in place, ultimately leading to yeah things. I'm not saying the clearly. like mm -hmm. ability to choose a limitless path. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think yeah, I think that sort of flows 
So it, it includes all of the students in the district. Okay. We have Actually, just the students in place. The and board. then that's the, the, the whole time. And the board continued growth like, throughout their education. As they move through, yeah, some, mm -hmm. I don't know the right way to say it, but yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Along their academic career. Yeah, that's. Um, okay. What would it look like at the school level? Sorry. I in their learning families <laughs> and caregivers. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put it. Um, uh, Mom, Keely, reply. Are. It actually autofilled. <laughs> AI is here. Uh, yeah. It's something about both, like they're, and maybe they're not just physically welcomed like into the, the building and participating in school maybe activities. Could be. They're also, you know, you know, maybe connected maybe or maybe talk about mm -hmm. graduates. You know, so there's like the physical, like they're maybe literally, they feel welcomed there. in the school building. Right. You know, they down the staff. Graduate. Um, I don't know if you want, like, I, I don't know the staff. I don't like know if it feels like yeah, I'm never there. there. Mm -hmm. it feels like, you know, like, that's the I don't know if you want to put, mm -hmm. you know, um, that kind of thing. It's kind of get the welcome, you know, like, you don't just arrive. A sense there, of right? community or whatever. Like, how do we say that on a builder level? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, yeah I know what you mean. I just don't want to put things yeah. on parents that, like, yeah, everybody right. right. can involve yeah. parents and then I one, and I am never at my child in school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, is it maybe then it's more like, um so I don't know to me at the school that level um, the is the know, one at the end yes, like that back. parents have um, so well, rather that than that parents school. being yeah. in the school yeah. right I don't know it's true um, um that the school is it at the school level which place, to me is or, like yeah. principles yeah uh, yes. because then there's the mm -hmm. classroom level maybe we don't have to mm -hmm. break it down to all three of these but mm -hmm. maybe school is enough to mm -hmm. to cover whole school and particular classroom but it, so right, and, then and maybe it really is enough that we say what success looks like is that parents so, are see so themselves nice at, you know don't just want to be but actually could say yeah I feel like I am a part of my kids education and then like a clear yeah, like four if you wanted to get more specific sense, than that then it's like well, two-way communication with teachers or two-way communication with principals or I don't know I was moving away from ensure yeah, that all yeah. but it's like almost wording them such that that might um, be at the goal level like maybe for yeah. like this year or the next two years so that's the thing we focus on this is like right students feel like you're right you know so right um yeah the last thing we want to do is maybe could start frame this in a way that's like well if you're not I mean, this school, yeah. you know, everybody wins or whatever, then you're, yeah. you're right. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. So families and caregivers um, who leave themselves to be, what if it's even like, maybe this would be more of a survey question, but like, I you'd know that, where to go. Sense. You'd know how to ask for yeah. help for your student. Like, like right, like, I originally that could, oh, like, I know where you. And then uh -huh. I, I like, did my wordsmithing. Yeah. If I needed to, I knew, I know who I could reach out to at the school. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's my that? exactly. But right. like, that I'm could so be a measure so of, because maybe you don't need it in that moment. Like, plural singular, I can't get it down still. I know how to look on power school to see mm -hmm. one teacher. Yeah, I would email if I needed to, or I know how to reach the principal yeah. if I needed to, or I know how to reach the guidance counselor if I needed to. So that makes me feel very lazy. Well, you know, sounds good. Comfortable asking for mm -hmm. help if I need to. But if you don't even know where to go, you're not going to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That might be too specific. Mm -hmm. for down. Uh, yeah, I put that in the like lower down. Yeah. So right now what we have is success looks like a broad and diverse group of stakeholders who contribute to the school community and the decisions of the board. And the board maintains a communication with the, the community about its decisions. Yes. Success looks like families and caregivers believe themselves to be a part of their children's education. Um, or can a term that most can yeah. I'm, I think it's I'm trying for like the first one because people, it includes all the people like yeah. Rhett was saying. The vast majority uh, of our voters don't. So much right. work <laughs> in talking around that concept. So do we communicate with them? Do, they, do, do we hear them when they... People may not understand what that means. Mm -hmm. so I like that. I think, I mean, when I think of like a very 
um, boiled down definition of equity. It's like getting everything. There's the thing on my desk. Can you get it? Tell me what the title is. I can't find it. That's part of the job. So she working in the building, guys, the power? And Wi Fi? Absolutely. So that's where our building is still wondering if they will be there for months. Oh my gosh. Somewhere. No power, no water. It was very surreal to reset on my like, COVID home office. Oh, that's a really important concept okay. for folks. So I am going to. That is like central mm. to the work. They're all in the front. Yeah, yeah. 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 is it yeah. building level versus classroom level? Yeah. Because absolutely the high school especially and just above right. it we yeah. have right. values listed it could one be of which is five different equity. classrooms we yeah and our values we should oh, define right, right, right. yeah 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 thank you okay yeah. and yeah. so that we are doing what you said yeah. for equitable yeah. but yeah. also yeah. for respect and yeah. inclusion yeah yeah and there might be a so tiny like another way to if phrase it's, it's yeah. there, themselves I to be I when i was like i'm trying to get a Oh, we get away from just making it more but concrete than yeah, just, we, hey, I'm a parent who wants values, to be a part of my child's education, but I'm feeling like there's a barrier right now. Right. So that well, parent might say, yeah, I believe so myself. Right. So I'm, yeah. and, and there's maybe some more language yeah. you could play with there. And we have yeah, here. Yeah. So maybe have five minutes so we can. <laughs> Okay. On all just values, so yeah, yeah involvement. Yeah, 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 let's do that. I think that's a good reminder to us that, you know, do want to link back. That's really funny. So there, there's so a comment the dual <laughs> about these. Like, uh -huh. And it's, yeah, yeah we're still on the side right. about naming these separately or how um, where they show up. And so, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And about naming them separately or highlighting. Huh. I mean, I think it probably makes sense to. So if you go down to mm -hmm. page 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think it's at least worth revisiting mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. if, yeah, clearly we're having okay. the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, mm -hmm. especially this part yeah. um, down here, this the orange, orange. Uh -huh. with the wording here of like students can mm -hmm. choose a limitless path. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It sounds a little odd to me. I think it's so initially that was part of a sentence, yes. and then and then we took it so out maybe we, and then created its own and borrow so some language from here. And we say yeah. um, families so and caregivers the, feel connected the, the original to their students was starting right. to choose a limitless path, and so the the beginning of that sentence just kind of got thrown together, mm -hmm. and then wordsmith mm -hmm. and can use some help I think for sure. And should we, in, in this last sentence, is, are we like focusing on like, beyond their experience at MRPS? Or is See, that this part of like, here, the capabilities yeah. of the school system? On yeah. He's on 12. Yeah. I think it starts. Which also is 10. But then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Very confusing. So okay, what part over are down here? Yep. Capabilities, human capital skills. So this and was talking yeah, about the school systems and capabilities and teachers' mm -hmm. capabilities mm -hmm. in the uh, MRPS no way. journey. Uh, this. Cultural competency yeah. about mm -hmm. all of, uh, about valuing the connections in the community, mm -hmm. and then there's connections here, right? Important relationships and networks. Confidence well, that's well, well, at what MRPS. you guys were just talking mm -hmm. about. I think of, like, with having that, that they were going to be yeah. uh, come into the building, the leadership team, and um, then the uh, um, mission value so basically is that values. This is it just because oh, okay. some and nice vision word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Features. And I like this, you know, that they need yeah, access to knowledge about student them. learning and the workings of the system yeah. and the skills yeah. and advocacy and educational support. Like we're giving yeah, I love this mm -hmm. and education necessary. If you go down to the bottom of the next page, mm -hmm. Jill, the staff and family partnership process. outcomes. That's what I'm reading right now. You know, when you graduate. I think that that's yep. how I'm reading this red one. Absolutely. And this this piece here that Libby shared with us before putting it here informed that language down below in our in our mm -hmm. indicator. So I'm not sure we want to say that they are going to have this opportunity mm -hmm. to bring the class yep. in the yep. boundaries of this public school education because it's that's not really that's true. <laughs> 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 um, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there are ways for you to have. An alternative journey, and that really starts to come out of that school. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah this is anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Stock has yeah. a lot of really good things in it. Yeah, you know, everybody yeah. who's gifted in piano should be able to right. So there's systemic today. and sustainable you know, things that we as the board would want to support. We could choose a reasonable to empower leadership, coordinate family, absolutely partnerships. Leaders committed to a systemic vision of family engagement. But there's lots of things that as a board we would yes need to support. Maybe like students feel empowered. Do you think that there's you know, language we could put here for the indicator itself? Yeah, I like the, um, I think we captured, I think that was what I was getting at, that the staff and families have a sense of comfort and self-efficacy in these partnerships. Piece to like the grand families mm -hmm. that our graduates feel, you know what I mean? Our graduates are right. What if you could take these bullets and made it into um, a sentence? I'm not sure. School and program staff. I think that's our MRPS school and school staff. Honor and recognize family responsibility. Connect family, 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 family engagement to student learning. And create welcoming and inviting cultures for all students. Family, MRPS families um, can negotiate my roles as supporters, encouragers, monitors, advocates, decision makers, and collaborators for their child's education. You could just Right. Steal that wording and make it an I mean, sentence. Somebody smarter than me, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody who studies this for a living. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Funds of knowledge is a very. I, I don't. I get what that means, Please. but that might be a little family. We might want to say like, could, yeah. I don't know how to say it. It gets at something. So honors cultural. I think either that recognize families' backgrounds. Yeah. And um, yeah, and okay. perspectives or something so benefiting I, themselves in their community. We can let the next group work. Terms like funds of knowledge. We can make it too much of a alienating to talk about too many dads. All right. So, what about access? Our graduates need access to one of those tasks. Saying our educators can honor and recognize families. I just. I think I just undid what you did. <laughs> like, oh, so I think I had oh, that's path amazing. leading to, and then you changed I, it to I path back. So that. Do it to see it. Just take <laughs> Whoop, that's our time. Our graduates and the vision for them at this future school. Let's see if I can actually. You know what I mean? So it's sometimes you can't do this from a PDF. Let's see if they're now, but it's sort of like, yeah, you have all these doors are open. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yes. There's lots of possibilities for your future. Like just to give up this wish. Our graduation vision in the this vision for the school teachers. Limitless path to their future. Yeah, I like that better. And the number three, I just like quickly, I don't, I'm not crazy about the language that I chose there, but I just quickly like finished. You had said now. something maybe a, a while back when I about the word collaborator. Like, Is that going a little farther than we want to go as far as? There's families and staff. Um, um, I think it goes to what you all were saying. Um, the challenge I have is when somebody to the when somebody to their future gives their their future pursuits to be yeah which is right. very tricky because there are often conflicting opinions right <laughs> exactly exactly and so so I think it is collaboration I think what one thing that the leadership team yeah, works on right yeah. this summer yeah. so what we are okay. yeah. 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 yeah curiosity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um we did a course called Better Conversation. And I think something like, yeah. you know, I was saying like longer, and it came up with our draft. So, long, you know, long, I think that's separate. part like, of collaboration. Really trying to go back mm -hmm. to the filler mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Not mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. You did that with the forming or everything yeah. all or that we're going back to what our office team has said. And if you're trying to come that, trying to gather it, understanding that there are more questions that they were made about do we come up with an advisory Yeah. Are they yeah, truly advisable? Is that the right term? Yeah. Or is it no, more I mean, council to their choice? Right. You know, like, yeah, it's so it's, I think we um, have that council, but yeah, it was, it was a big conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Size. I stole a little bit of time from the big group because okay. we were like just ready. To, we just had found some great language. I wanted to make sure to capture it. 
So let's bring it back to the big group though. Um, and this time we'll do a little um, switching up of our presentation. And why don't we have Jim and Rhett go first? Belonging, safety, and wellness. How's your draft looking? So we actually thought the work previously was pretty strong. We, uh, it's dark. Um, yeah. So, um, so a couple of observations, which I think were the same as before. Again, you know, cognizant that this, unlike the academics, where I think specifics matters a lot, you know, belonging, wellness, and and safety have a lot to do with how people feel and what their mental state is. And yeah, so we felt it was okay that there's not a lot here that's going to be quantifiable. The idea that in order to measure this, the school's going to be have to be pretty proactive for a lot of these in terms of like reaching out, checking in, giving people opportunities to to weigh in and not kind of assuming everyone's fine, like making sure we have check-ins and and surveys and, and other things to, you know, to get a sense of, of what the issues are. And also, you know, it's something too where, you know, if 98% of people are feeling great and 2% of people are feeling awful, we have a problem. Uh, and yeah, you know, how do we do that? And and one of the and, and one of the Brett and I fleshed out a little bit more um was you know, kind of the resources being available, the you know, the re the idea that even if we have a great environment, there are going to be people who are struggling. And so having the resources be available and then also um, making sure that the school community members feel that those resources are accessible for them. So just having the resources out there, if people don't know about them, if there's something intimidating about them, if there's something that's hard in terms of access, um, both literally in terms of access and also just in terms of how people feel about the access. Um, that's a problem. So, you know, making sure that 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 we have those first three indicators, but then making sure that for people who are um, who need help, that, that those resources are available for them and they they know it and and, and it feels like that's like, yeah, again. I think that's that's pretty much it. That, I want to give Chris some original credit for kind of drafting these up. She did a great job and just hit on it well. And there's not not a lot we we uh, wanted to change. So I think maybe just for the benefit of folks who can't see this yet, um, why don't you just read out loud? So the four all student staff families caregivers feel welcome to our schools and values the unique history, identity, and beliefs that they bring to the school community. B, the environments, systems, and opportunities that foster student and staff wellness are present, successful, and thriving in our schools. Student, staff, and families caregivers feel physically and emotionally safe while having a strong sense of belonging and healthy connections with those in their school buildings. Um, Resources are available to staff, students, families, caregivers that enable them to access their education and school community members feel those resources that are accessible to them. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I just have one suggestion for the last um, bullet point there. I wrote it in the comment, but um, because this one, it, you know, we do have a, a priority of academic achievement. I wonder if we can change the wording to that last bullet point that this is more about social emotional well-being and not about accessing their education, like the resources to access their education, maybe resources um, to ensure their social emotional well-being, something along those lines. I, I thought about that too. I, I just want to throw something there. The reason I kind of like education is because I think we want to look at social, emotional, and belonging in the context of a school that provides education, and that one of the reasons that we want people to feel this way is so that they can access their education, with the idea being that if they're not feeling safe, if they're not feeling belong, if they don't feel a sense of belonging, it impedes their education. Mm -hmm. I think if we move it beyond that, there people could 
feel fine in school and not feel fine in their lives. And I'm not sure that the I'm not sure the mission of a school is to provide general mental health outside of the context of making sure people have the emotional safety and wellness to access their education. I mean, mm -hmm. I just feel there's a little mission for you know. Like, like if our if our goal is to just make sure everyone who comes in contact with the school gets the emotional and mental health support they need, rather than in the context of what they need to achieve the mission of the school, mm -hmm. then we kind of wander into becoming a mental health. Facility. Yeah, it's sort of what we were talking about in the first round, yeah. which is um, readiness to learn, yeah. like providing them all the resources, which would include social emotional well being to be to feel ready to learn so that makes sense to me and maybe we have one more small group session maybe there's a little bit of refining that the next small group can do that to bring both of those things out um, or to bring the social emotional within the context of education and power mm -hmm. i think too for the next group i do i actually i like the phrase readiness to learn and i wonder if that can specifically be woven in there um, and then I do think, and I had put in a comment that I think some, um, for purposes of being specific and word efficient, that we um, get clear on which groups are, which groups uh, are intended for which indicators. Like, do we intend this indicator for student staff, families, caregivers, or do we specifically intend this indicator for students and staff? Um, so that we are being realistic about you know the reach and the capacity of the school and just that it's you know kind of circles back to what our primary you know function and mission is as a school um and i think probably just for a word efficiency purpose like choosing families or caregivers and i feel like in this district we largely lean toward caregivers so maybe just sticking with that just for simplicity and word efficiency readability okay One any other thing. thoughts uh-huh I, I feel like this last D should be moved just one up and then C should be the final sentence. Cool. All right, uh, Jill and I will go next. We had Libby's help on this um, as well. So we took that feedback from the last big group to point um, that really to, to have this be a, the way that we talk about it, be not just centered around the board, but the somebody's uh, uh, students or a um, caregiver's experience with the district holistically. So um, we did quite a bit of um, revising and it currently reads, our students are more likely to be successful when our whole school community is engaged in their education. Success looks like a broad and diverse group of stakeholders who contribute to the school community and the decisions of the board and the board maintains a communication loop with the community about its decisions. Our educators honor and recognize families' backgrounds, connect family engagement to student learning, and create welcoming, inviting cultures. Our families are supporters, encouragers, monitors, advocates, decision makers, and collaborators in their children's education. In the vein of moving sentences around, Emma, I'm yeah. wondering if you're about, you had the sentence that I was talking about, uh -huh. success looks like, that I feel like is the final mm -hmm. sentence mm -hmm. and the, yeah, going after three to four. And I don't even know if that first sentence needs to be there um, because we do talk about um, the importance of um, a collaborative approach to learning for the success of students up in approach, the approach section. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just potentially an edit on my own writing. <laughs> I mean, I, I like it because the community, each multiple parts of the community are, are singled out mm -hmm. individually. And so we talk about our or you've written about our students, our educators, our families and supporters. And so I like that that is there. <clears throat> and it's, that ties back to the conversation that we had about, is there, a, is there a role for and a benefit of 
defining thing. I feel like that's sort of like a definition of, um, you know, that opening sentence of what, of, of how we believe students are successful. So, and while some of those things are mentioned in the approach section up above, said upstairs, <laughs> um, <laughs> but how often are people going to be scrolling back and forth yeah, to kind true. of look at that foundational piece? So does it make sense to kind of weave some of that Very more over. defining foundational understandings into um, these priorities? So that's just something for us to continue to chew on, but. Any other thoughts? Community engagement and accountability? Um, I mean, I like the final line. I the what it doesn't do is it doesn't, I think, respect the, that families might have different approaches to how they want to engage in their children's education, mm -hmm. and it seems to create an expert. Yeah. It seems to it seems it's it seems to create an expert that if families aren't doing that that they're maybe not meeting the expectations of the district. Could we say um, our families are welcomed as? I was gonna say are, are welcomed or are given, you know, full opportunity to be, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. So it's, it's a, you know, it allows, it allows families to do it if they want to, but if some families are a little more, you know, hey, the schools educate our kids and we, we trust it and, and we stay away, mm -hmm. that's fine too. Mm -hmm. It's pretty funny. You can't see this, but as you were talking, the camera is zooming in on you and others. Like, <laughs> 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 I feel about that. I, don't know, I, I, I can't see it. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so much, but sorry, but I had to say something. Okay. I'm wondering yeah. just. So the now the last sentence where Scott moved it to that it's still um, it still reads a little like board centric and I'm just wondering I and and I'd like to hear from Libby on this or anyone with thoughts um, like would it would it be problematic to say decisions of the board and district or board and administration like is there you know, uh, maintains the board and administration maintains a communication loop with the community. You know what I mean? I do know what you're saying. I don't know that we want to require that our administrators report out on every decision that they make. So, but yeah, I do no. think actually at board level decisions, that is appropriate. So that's yes. where I get a little stuck on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think part of my challenge is that I consider the board part of the district. Yeah. The board is an integral part of the district. So if the word district, in my mind, the word district encompasses the board. And yeah. one of the things we talked about was like, we're talking broad right now, right? When you get to specific, that's where there could be specific board indicators. I guess that's why I'm wondering why are we calling out the boards? Because I think when I think about like um, the, the people who have come to us to talk to us about communication issues, they're typically not some people are complaining specifically about the board and how we communicate. But I also feel like we receive a lot of feedback around like, I'm not hearing this from my teacher, my kid's teacher. I'm not hearing this from, like, I feel like the individual caregiver and student experience is not typically with the board around communication right. and engagement. But I think we get on that, get to that with the, the second sentence. Our educators honor and recognize families' backgrounds, connect family engagement to student learning, and create welcoming, inviting cultures. So if someone is, I think we're addressing that, and maybe that's something that can happen with better refinement mm -hmm. in the next small group. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, it was one of the things that um, Jill and I were talking about was like, we couldn't get that, we couldn't figure out how to put it all in one sentence to yeah. have it at the different levels of the district, the board level and the school level, for example. Right. So we ended up putting them in separate sentences. But yeah. I think the whole thing does address what okay. you're saying, just not that one particular sentence. Okay. 
and I just took a hacksaw to what was there and I can undo all my changes very easily. Um, but I took out the board entirely and just changed the end of that sentence to be inclusive of the board and the rest oh. of the district, at least in my mind. We kind of talk this is kind of this this has kind of come up is like how transparency is sort of this double-edged sword where the districts through the board decisions the board is accountable for those decisions and and transparency is needed but transparency is not always necessarily not at every level it's not necessarily required at every level of, the, of this different decision making processes the other thing i'm thinking about as we're talking about whether to use or the, the whether to report to the board in this paragraph or not is that i've often felt like if they're if meeting members are unhappy and they're criticizing the board i would far prefer that to criticizing teachers and if there's a way that the board can take heat that can protect our teachers and administrators, I would, I would like, I think that that's a, an essential function of the board because especially I mean, you have to take it too, but especially our teachers <clears throat> want to have a protective, you know, effects on teachers trying to do our our work. <clears throat> yeah, I think. I think Scott, I do disagree with mm -hmm. making it like putting trans layering transparency for every single decision. I would say that for sure, board decisions absolutely need to happen transparently, mm -hmm. um, and we should be accountable. Yeah, and we have a, we have a yeah, as me as I think alluded, we have a special relationship with the community too. We are kind of the funnel between. At least they follow the broader districts. Other thoughts on this one? I, I will say I um, think that having something about circling back on board decisions with the community would be is important to have language like that in here because that was. The biggest piece of feedback we got from the survey that we did about community engagement with the board. Now that is, we only asked about board community engagement in that particular survey, um, and it was, but it was overwhelming. People asking for it. We just tell us what you decide and mm -hmm. do a quick recap for us. So I think that, to me, feels like a clear indicator of success when that is happening um, consistently. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna push back a little bit. I hear what y'all are saying. Um, it doesn't say all decisions, right? right? And I still think being, closing the loop is an example of being transparent and accountable. Agreed. And mm -hmm. so if we're trying to be, we're trying to zoom out and not just talk about the board, but talk about the district, which is inclusive of the board, wouldn't we want, the district to be transparent and accountable and the board mechanism might be closing the loop whereas the leadership team mechanism might be you know sending out updates because i'm not really doing a good job of articulating but i i do think it's important important for us to think of the board as part of the district and not something separate um and i do think yeah, like, yeah, I'm gonna just stop. I think I what I hear you saying is that you think there should be transparency at all levels and that that is okay for that to be stated here. Absolutely. And or yeah, as much as is reasonable. Yes, yes, exactly. exactly. Like, I think that for anyone to read into this, you know, like, and maybe we can clarify in one of our goals you know, that like when we're talking about um, communication and looping back that, or when we're talking about transparency and we like write a specific goal for transparency, that it could be <clears throat> specified there when appropriate, yeah. right? It's like, I feel like most reasonable people would know 
that there's going to be a million decisions made on a daily basis that are not going to be transparent, right? And there's a lot of information that cannot be provided for legal reasons mm -hmm. to the community. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's in the spirit of this. Like, I, I guess I'm not worried about, and, and if some an individual does read it that way, we can educate them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear that. And I, I, that makes a lot of sense to me. And certainly at that end of the spectrum of like legal reasons, one, one question that just to tease this out a little further that I have is like, you know, the district just made a big decision to get to, to use this panorama data system. Would we expect that that would be done in a transparent manner where, because I think one could argue that wasn't done in a transparent manner, you know, the administrators just decided to do it. We were informed of it. We were not, even the board was not like, hey, these are the three we're, we're thinking about here. You know, this is the one we think we're going to go with. Mm -hmm. We need you to weigh in. I think it's totally fine that that wasn't done in a, in a transparent matter, but it doesn't reach the level of like, oh, we need for fun. So I, did, I just I wanted to throw that out there as a way of teasing out this conversation as a, almost like a community case study. I mean, I, I think the, the thing about that is it, it it was really kind of a system decision. I mean, like the data was there, like this is this is the tool that we're gonna invest in right. data we have. It wasn't a decision about, well, we're gonna stop tracking this thing or we're gonna start tracking this thing. It wasn't it wasn't substance so much as, as presentation like mm -hmm. um I just wonder, would yeah. that be the kind of thing that somebody could go, you just made a really big decision, but you didn't do it transparently, if if that's the way we have if that, that's the expectation yeah. we've set of what success looks like, that's all I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that just depends on the parameters you have around. I mean, I feel like with each one of these uh, priorities, there's a way to read into it mm -hmm. in a way where we're setting <laughs> ourselves up to be offering way more, like over promising. Mm -hmm. Right. With if you go back to the one that I spent a little more time on, belonging, safety, and wellness, like I'm sure there's a way for community members to read that as like you're responsible for my students, you know, emotional well-being. And, you know, you need to be held accountable to, you know, how are they as an individual feeling safe, right? And it's mm -hmm. like, sure, on some level, yes. And then what Jim is talking about too is like we can't be responsible for everything. And so I think these are aspirational, mm -hmm. um, but but I don't think we should be afraid of people reading into them to hold us accountable for things that are that are beyond possibility. Um, I, I just want to also raise that transparency was a big theme of Nathan's mm -hmm. work with like the visioning process too. Mm -hmm. And I know that that word holds a lot of weight and we're a little bit nervous about the word transparency. But I, I would encourage us to infuse the language of the of the indicator with transparency somehow because it was a huge value um, in that vision work. Another idea that Scott had during our work is we were we were having a similar conversation around the word equitable in our in, in our last meeting. And up above under values, where it says respect, equity, inclusion, empathy, accountability. So I feel like that's an, an opportunity for us to sort of define some of these, mm -hmm. you know, like what is our working definition of accountability? Mm -hmm. And I feel like in accountability, we could provide some caveats to what mm -hmm. we're capable of providing around transparency mm -hmm. or maybe and or maybe the level of decision Mm -hmm. making you know I think um in the policy committee we tend to try to like provide a lot of like wiggle room for the district in the way that the words that we choose mm -hmm. um in the policies so that it can be like shale <laughs> or you know what I mean like <laughs> there's wording wordsmithing that can be done to make sure that we're not boxing ourselves in to like oops we chose this new like grading platform and now the community is pointing to this indicator as a way to say that we, you know, right? And we might, and, and maybe that is something that should should be made, as right? A, in, I think whenever possible right? and appropriate, I think the more transparency mm -hmm. and, and community engagement, the better. But I also know, you know, I've been on the board for a while now, and I know that things sometimes have to happen quickly. And even when you have your best intentions out there, and you provide 
six different ways for community to engage on a decision. They don't, and we have to move forward. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. All right, well, this is all really good feedback for the last small group, did you? <laughs> Whoever it is, I can't remember is, yeah, right? Let's get, put it in Kristen's hand. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the um, closing the academic gap, achievement gap. Um, where have you landed so far? wants to report out. I'm kind of honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm happy to. Um, so first thing we did was we decided that it would be good to add a word to our um, priority. Mm -hmm. And so we propose calling it the academic achievement gap and not just the academic gap or just the achievement gap. Um, so so the current language is opportunity gap in the literature, right? So take that for what you will. And yeah, <laughs> we get so and a third word in there. Yeah, we we, yeah. we talked about that as well. And well, I I feel like it's a different definition. Like when we're talking about what opportunities students have to achieve is different from talking about what they ultimately achieve mm -hmm. academically. And but I've been I've been out of the field for a little bit, so it was a, now it's, sorry. I want to yeah. jump in here because it was important to us to step out of the literature mm -hmm. jargon and and name what we think our community would understand. And I don't know that if they if, if I don't know exactly what opportunity gap is, but I have a better I'm more comfortable with understanding my understanding of what academic achievement gap is. Mm -hmm. So that's where that's why we landed there um, up for debate, certainly. Um, and then we also expanded um, the, the previous iteration um, and did a little bit of moving around. Um, and the main thing we added was a, the piece about the system. So bullet point number two, I guess. Number two in the list, um, we, we added a piece about um, yeah, the mechanisms um, that was similar to the um, one of the pre one of the other groups, maybe the belonging, safety, and wellness. So we kind of modeled the belonging, safety, and wellness approach in the this priority, um, and then put the the final statement of at the our graduates, um, sort of the the. Um, like what success would look like would be our graduate, the, the fourth item, our graduates envisioning limitless path to their future chosen pursuits of continuing to benefit themselves in their community. Okay. Oh, and then the piece that uh, I think I'm just brought up about, we were talking about whether or not we should be defining equitable in this priority and then we realized oh there's all this text above there and we have our values including equity and so I think and I agree with what was stated before it would be if we're going to say our value is respect and equity and inclusion then what do we mean by that mm -hmm. and then that would help if we use those terms throughout our priorities And are you, was your thinking then that the A through H here would also be part of the indicator? That, that's the, that's just the detail that we didn't want to lose. The holdover. Yeah, that's exactly. The holdover. Okay. Yeah. So we didn't, we didn't touch any of that. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's the, the, the specifics that yep. we were trying to avoid for this conversation. Yep. Great. Any thoughts mm -hmm. for the next small group to consider as far as the wording of this indicator? I appreciate that you added the systems in place to measure and monitor and support. That's key. Yeah. Question that I'm thinking. So in one of the in one of the other indicators or in the other priorities, the very last statement was success is dot, 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 should we, should number four be success is our graduates envisioning dot, 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 or just leave it as sense. I think it could be, I, I actually wasn't sure it 
that needed to be there in the last sentence okay. of the community engagement. It was sort of the like, this is how I was getting it out of my brain, but mm -hmm. I don't know if it's how it has to gotcha. be forever. <clears throat> All right. Any other thoughts before we move to our final small group round? All right. Good. Good discussion, team. So I've shifted up the small groups a little bit from what they were originally. So on closing the achievement gap um, is going to be um, Kristen and me. Belonging, safety, and wellness will be Rhett and Emma. And communication and community engagement is going to be Scott, Jill, and Jim. Has anyone else been on community engagement? Because I have not yet. So if I could switch places with somebody who has not, who I has been, been on belonging, safety, and wellness. Shh, you, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Yes. And yeah, I think that's fine at this point. We've all talked about them enough. I was trying to keep that continuity, but I think it's fine at this point. Yeah. So Jill and Emma will swap. And Jill, you can go to belonging, safety, and wellness with Rhett. Okay. And Emma, you can do the community engagement no, just, with Scott, the Scott and, and Jim. Right, well, hi. Okay. The three of us. Is that who it is? Yeah. yeah, if you can be here. And we're going to 15 minutes for this one. 15 minutes for this one. And we're just finalizing this. We're, 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 we don't have any communicators for the next for blind. Is there a mark? Do you see any mark? Is there a mark? Is there a this is the this was the one that has to be on so they had already been person and I just it's been a big gain over my standard on the board, at least in my heart, that I've been hearing from the community around mm -hmm. that, like, basically, a, a, a sentiment, a spirit in the community that's like, that we're not doing a very good job with us. And by we, I mean the greater we, not just the board, but like, in general, people feel sort of disconnected and really more overly over promising. And and people do this leader must be safe. More access. Um, yeah. I mean, the thing that I was thinking that sentence going across, it was first stated yeah. earlier. It's like mm -hmm. there are some things that are seeming to be and I think like the yeah. shooter is right? going provide a lot of this, right? But like, like, so I want to mm -hmm. get to the sentiment part of it. Mm -hmm. It's going to make sure we're going to stay safe the best safe. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel safe as yeah. you know, so we're just out of afterwards. So it's like, you can go and So I think it's coming from. While I agree with that statement, and yes, there are stuff. It's kind of said for you know, every in the traffic. So decision. Um, everything that we've been, you know, but how can we, we not say that we're going to be safe? You know, and like, like how well, we well, make that statement for that. The guys which I sent right after they did was all the very first thing was to communicate your students and the that they were safe and that everything that they don't have was to them. them. Right, like so, there is, there is, that is in place. Whether we can control everything, but like, what we can do is everything we can to create the welcoming society. Like, right, just just to do the but maybe it's when the students like literacy you know so crises or events the safety of the community the community the district is responsible for I don't know about you know what I'm saying. Put up all some procedures in place that are reversed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 
So let's, let's give a left at the end of that. Right? Yeah, I, I don't know if we want one of the word crisis. It seems like that's <laughs> all. At least I would like to avoid that. But like, it's like not really. It was feeling like, well, then, like, not just the action to it. It's saying it. That's what I was just wondering. Unless it's my level, you could, but not everybody can be on. You know, I'm so seventh grade. And it is natural that they don't feel like they can engage. You know, that they may not feel like they totally belong because that's that age. Where um, everybody yeah, else so like, are thinking about that, that, right? right? And if the, like, they don't I, I quite do have the like, frontal portion, and, and I agree with yourself, and you're saying the, the, the um, that so it's it's a difficult one, and, and at the same time, it's like, you know, first we want to say that, yeah, you can honor, right? recognize. I do think you guys do some things. And and so, and so I do think like keeping that thing, the first day, is like. Um, I, I think all the solens like new songs might it does seem like there's definitely that like you were saying about actively prioritizing. I think we do honor like recognize background, yeah, right. Like it has so many pieces of the people. You know, there's just always so much that has that in terms of you prioritize, yeah, understand the value of the experience that I in there that I'm not excited to reach out. Like, welcome to the environment, it's pretty similar. So it's almost like maybe it could be like, I feel like. Transparent yeah. intentional systems. Yeah. I mean, like, I too, like, I choose to be um, there in I, that I get that. And I'm like, and wrestling. Yeah, I'm just trying to like so put it in like a to create resilience. Like under history, like, you know, like we could think of other words besides what they like, it's right, right? Because I think, no, I'm still like, like you can't like, promise bad things are not going to happen to our students, you know, like, staff, right? So, you know, but we can help people right. become more resilient. So, they so I just don't, mm -hmm. so. And I also feel like it's a really it was it's an inside and jargon so society from like our to end. We've been debating a lot at our leadership team. We've been reading a lot of rehabilitations. That were some sustainability within our school system. And I think we're doing a lot of enabling of fragility right now. So it's a, and we have some staff who push us that's there. my favorite and we have some staff who are like could you stop the one that's you know, so it's it's just a really entertaining to debate right now to me get with our and our staff like yeah i'm wanting to see that i'm just you know you know parents who write it and say i want my kids with gh because they're the one before it so it's it's really delicious right is that enabling for the right like it's just i mean i'm sure you've got lots of thoughts on that right well yeah and also, like, I, you know, I, 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 I my thing is, what I read that, that everything goes to well at is, is not the school culture. There's been a lot of the, the ways in which people like that I'm very close to are not in family. And in fact, they have been right. allowed to you know, families not and engage with difficult things right. for, not, not for, the, for decades. Right. And that is why I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. Like, I don't want to feel like dramatic I'm concerned. Yes. I like that better. I don't know. Anyway. um, What about? When circumstances arise that disrupt, I don't know if that's the right way, but uh, when disruptive circumstances arise, maybe the dis or what about just uh, or the, the decision makers were the go back to the system. What's up? Um, the decision makers were that really the student has learned skills to like we, we uh, decision makers do what we can to prepare yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. prepared to yeah. 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 in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's you know, right. yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a place to help students, students overcome. Over I think we want families to feel the agency over the decisions that affect their students. No. I love having a word that's what people say. I like because like, it implies that something hard is not taking it forward and that's yes. Yeah. They should not right? they should not just model like they should call us like that was like a key. Right. But it's it's more like a purchase in your workplace. And that there are not there. It's a thing. It's a muscle they're in there actually. Because they're actually we expect it and we have ways to work with it. They're, <laughs> they're, yeah, they're giving it up. When disruptive circumstances arise, it's a device structure on the system and build resilience. But I think that should be yes, not so they should be so there. Right? They're, 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 they're not going to be able to do it. 
do a virus there vaccine. We go. Like, um, yes or no. Okay, so we more um, news for us on the fair. And I think if we, if that becomes our indicator, then every community is going to be safe. I didn't like, get it. Yeah, same, I, same I, same I wasn't part of it. Strong sense of belonging and feel safe. You could also look at it as like decision makers and their creative streets education. Right. So, like, so students have like, family um, caregivers that, that have a strong, strong sense of belonging. Okay. Right. Like yeah. I would like to be consulted a little bit to our district and understand how that impacts their strong sense of belonging. I like this change here. You know, and it's often at that level where you're not very considering parents as decision makers and that they're well, like, no, oh, I like, I like kids that. So just going, so like, I do think, not mine, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's where I feel, that's why it's, it's rough because I think there are places where physically safe. We actually want emotionally not to say like a community input, but they're actually not the ability to say that. Like, yeah, that's not good for my kid, or I think that's not the right choice for my kid. Is... <laughs> this, that actually be um, part of the real decision. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think there is something about like this. Well, this is where I get into the semantics of like being, I know exactly I know what you mean. I'm not sort of worried. Yeah, I mean, but like, I know what you like, they know they care about the bathroom. They do, okay. and they're not going to stop okay. it, whether or not they have, know, yeah. whether or not we have it's decision a, maker. Right. So again, there are systems in place, an environment in place that um, makes them. I'm not as afraid of it. Like I feel yeah. like it's right. better to have the stand when it doesn't like, happen because, um, because kids make mistakes, right? And it's always every opportunity. And and then it goes back to the other question. Because it gives like I want to be able to make the decision if you always for parents a lot. So you only have to make sure that's not how their decision is broken. So therefore, every day is the process, right? Like that's like I'm sorry, which is happening, right? And I don't think we need to put a moment like a physical line to this. Like I'm tired to get away from that. I think it's just sort of like what's the biggest problem? You're a little bit getting into this market. I get it. We've done talking about so how can we understand where we're from? But I just feel like physically safe. Then we're gonna like wash it or wash all the work before and have yes to the power of the visioning committee. I could just be looking away from the most of the things right. Wash all there needs to be mechanics. Like I absolutely safe and having a strong sense. Then it's like we're getting so far away from what like as a state way if and when I ever get and I don't I just have an actual very many people. I do think it's my important to us going to everything they can I wanna be voting. Yeah. Oh I think the building is good. So what happens when one of my staff members who has a child I think I works with a child who changed the sentence and kept the spirit and maybe address your concern with the decision makers in by saying it's decision makers. You know, like there's there's lots of things like that. I can't ensure it. I can't, you know, so I can't ensure it. That's what we're doing. Like can't go back that's what we're acknowledging what we're, parents, you know, yeah. so I role role and like, making decisions for their so children. I would be um, every student getting the I mean, the lawyer did provide, provide support. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All <laughs> <that> <laughs> would like, uh, like as appropriate here. I know. Or, <laughs> or whether or not to put a oh, comma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe we put it but all, I mean, as appropriate, I think, safety. goes throughout the entire, right, but like that's like what you were saying. Sort of like, then we're getting yeah. to yeah. 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 Yeah.
I just that's not an accurate no. statement. Um, no, um, the supporters, but basically, right? again, the, the rest is like everyone. Where are we? Um, <clears throat> sorry, we need to build resiliency and, that, and we um, need to not re traumatize people or re right. like <laughs> right. to continue to yeah. divert yeah, away from them. Because yeah. 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 to me, like what the word that's important to me is advocate, like that they should be is can't expect to feel safe to enable their children. I no, it can't. No, it's fine. We've got to expect, yeah. And then that gets to the like full so that's just like you, you know, you expect each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do want them to be safe. On this position, position. We expect the grocery store to be safe. We expect yeah. work to be safe. Um, so, can, can, can we go back to this sentence real quick with our last minute? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Remind you that uh, can we define inviting relationship? First so that the question could we yeah, define that like with students that they'll never be out of care of their caregivers? <laughs> They were talking to well, I their psychologist, like, and I was no, I was so there to support psychologists uh, or whatever. Is and he was talking about this twelve-year war with stakeholders. We say that war the time. Is is the the just a lot of right, like right. I don't it's have like any this, experience. Just this paragraph. Communicate in the video sense. Yeah, you're so telling me on delusion. To me, I see indicators. Mm -hmm. right? like they're you're telling me on delusion. Are you telling me on delusion? How about this? That we will regress. You go to the grocery store, you buy a bunch of groceries, and you're pushing them. Where are your cars? In your car. So, when so your car is that's by the honor, right? But and you're going to, I think, the, the you know, they're honoring right now. So, if they're doing that, then you sort of lost a lot. How about experience? Start educators, communicate. And it was brilliant. It was brilliant because it's all about, you know, it's just a really so brilliant. I bring that out every every day. It's like delusion, your perspective, your perception. Perception under right, you yeah. take for like granted, reality. and you yeah. take for granted so that, that, that gets to the engagement. I can trust yeah. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. somebody yeah. told me that you're delusional. Those, now I think everything you said yeah. is yeah. not values that right. our educators are honoring so in, are infused in the way that they. And uh, yeah. I can imagine you and that conversation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> right, so I wish to get more water, I think, and then when we come back in, we will do a Final readout of where they stand right now. And talk about next steps. I'm gonna look ahead. That's super interesting. <clears throat> it's this idea that we teach kids, particularly girls, how to catastrophize and everything, right? And that they're victims to everything instead of being victims to a horror situation. So I'm getting somebody with social media, they're probably the victim. I think she's really the victim on social media, right? All right. So we are reporting out where we've landed, and I think it's time for group three to kick us off. Even though you weren't, yeah, anyway. Yes, community engagement and accountability. How's it looking? We have a wellness center. That's here. Oh, yeah, that's you. Yeah. Thank you. I was going to say, sorry. We <laughs> <laughs> conversation about the wrong thing. <laughs> nope, that's facilitator error. Um, <laughs> we talked about just sort of trying to, trying to ground the language in the work that was done with the visioning committee and make sure that we're staying true to like keep anchoring back to what our community is asking from us in this community engagement and accountability piece. So, um, and with Jim, the lawyer on board and Scott, the wordsmither, we were able to uh, change a little bit when we felt like brought it back to that. Um, so I'll just read it for the sake of people who aren't on the live document. Um, our students are more likely to be successful when our whole school community is engaged in their education. Our educators communicate effectively in a manner that honors and recognizes families' backgrounds and connects family engagement to student learning to foster inviting collaborative relationships. Our families are valued collaborators, partners, monitors, advocates, and decision makers in their children's education. Success looks like a broad and diverse group of stakeholders who contribute to the school community and decisions that are transparent and accountable. Awesome. I just want to air just for because I'm aware and, and, and we're better. I, I I like the intent behind saying that families are decision makers. I think we need to acknowledge that they're not decision makers in all things. Um, there are places where I think they should be decision makers. I mean, like things that specifically affect their child, maybe not all things as specifically affect their child, but certain certainly decisions about their child's education. Um, they're not going to be decision makers and who will be behind I mean, just they're not going to be decision makers in, I mean, they can give input to the decision making process and we value their partnership as part of that, but 
they're not ultimately going to be decision makers and probably most of the decisions that the school and the administration make. So um, I just want to be careful about the expectation we might set up with that indicator. Uh, I think most community members are going to realize that there's a, as appropriate in there, but there are going to be community members that may not feel like it. Jim did type as appropriate, <laughs> and we deleted that. That's why I chuckled. <laughs> so we I, were I, I, pushing back, just trying to be like, you know, this is, we're, we're hoping that our community can be reasonable when reading this. And if we just go into like lawyer mode and yeah. make sure that everyone is perfect, then it's going to read like a legal document. It's not document. a policy. Right. It's and, not a, right. We yeah. want it to be accessible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, yeah. and we also circled back to the potential for using the, the values section as a way to flesh out some of these definitions mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. expectations that the community may have. Yeah. If we say, you know, we value you as a decision maker, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It know? sort of goes back to transparent as well, right? It's almost like exactly like, as a perfect. <laughs> right. Yeah. Here are some of, here's here's the parameters within which these things apply or right. here are the appropriate roles and why there are I have a, so I know you all talked a lot about the word transparent. Do you feel like transparent is enough to, to include that whole, like we, we loop back on decisions that we've made or should we put that, that wording in there where the board is like loops back out on decisions that we think or something like that. I, I think I said this last time, and so I'm, I hesitated to say it again, but I, I trend, like accountability it, to me includes Great. that. Okay. And so I don't think it needs to be spelled out. Okay. And I also I'm see the that. value. Yeah. In, I do think it's possible that this second bullet point, instead of saying our educators, right, that could be all of us. And instead of specifically calling out educators mm -hmm. who I think people maybe are just thinking are the classroom teachers and right? principals. I, yeah. yeah. So I, I wonder if we could make a little list there that includes the board, you know, we'll educators. Just just yeah. 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 I, I really like that edit because I think that we also want to state an expectation that our families communicate effectively too. Yes. And in a way that honors the backgrounds and expertise of everybody in the district. So I know that, that I like that of it. Um, and I do feel like I like the communication loop because that's been sort of a theme that's been arising is like us reporting back to people on because it's not that things aren't being done. It's that sometimes they're just not hearing about the stuff that's being done. So I, I like capturing that it's still in there as a comment, right? I just I just cleaned <laughs> it out because we were saying accountability encompassed closing mm -hmm. the loop. Yeah. And I also feel like it could be it could be fleshed out more specifically in some of the goals. Uh-huh. Yep. And, and as you were saying when we get process. when we define what accountability looks like as a value. Yep. Mm -hmm. I feel really uncomfortable about families being decision makers in their children's education because my kids are in your classroom. And what if I don't like your decisions? All the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it, it's a collaborative effort. And yes. so when any individual family is under the impression that they decide what their children will be taught, it affects everyone that's around their child, their child. And I don't, I might not want that. I, I trust Libby. I don't trust you. I, I completely agree. And the way I see this is we are valuing that parents make decisions in their children's education. We are not valuing that ch parents make all of the decisions that affect their, ch their children, right? But the reality is that parents make countless decisions that affect their children, and we value that in our district. I don't see how parents are decision makers. They're collaborators, I, they're partners. I have an example, I have an example. Like, I have decided that I will enforce that there's 30 minutes of reading every day after school in my house. That's a decision I've made, 
based on what I want for my, for my kids' education. It doesn't necessarily impact what happens in the classroom, but I am a decision maker in my child's education. That makes sense. I will yeah. context that means a little yeah. bit. I'll give another example that's a little bit more like school centered, but um, you know, my son is going into his junior year of high school. And I feel valued as a decision maker at the table when decisions are being made about what classes he's choosing for the next year by the guidance counselor. His guidance counselor has been very mindful to be inclusive of um, me and my husband, like in emails and decisions that are being made, you know, like, should he take a P for this class or should he get the grade as part of his transcript? Should he move into Spanish three or should he stop his second language journey? You know, and and I'm a, a voice at the table of that decision making process, and I want to be valued in that way. So I don't think it's I don't. This is where this is this is where the conversation came from. Is like how literal do we take every word out of context in the in this in the language? And there are probably going to be people, and I like the way Scott put it, he's like, those people are always going through this, no matter how you word it, mm-hmm. where they're going to come and expect to be able to make like the ultimate decision, maybe. Okay. Um, and then it's about how do we manage those expectations when they arise. But I don't feel that the way it's worded, um, you know, I mean, could I, reasonably I, be interpreted that way. <laughs> I think when I put, when I connect value to decision maker, value decision maker, it makes more sense. Mm-hmm. there's a lot of words in between <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, let's I mean, leave it like that for now so that we can move on <laughs> to the next yeah i mean you don't want to be in a situation though where you've got like the you know like open 24 hours and someone comes as you're closing and they'll be like he says that says open 24 hours be like well, well not the row. i mean it's like <laughs> so Let's go to (laughs) academic um, achievement gap. Um, Kristen and I just did a tiny bit of refining here. We left some of it in so you all can see the changes we made, but some of it we felt pretty good about. Um, The first one is every student has the confidence and skills to achieve excellence and to support continuous growth along their learning journey. So we just slotted in achieving excellence there, but leaving the continuous growth along their learning journey. Um, systems are in place to measure, monitor, and support students on their unique path towards meeting or exceeding grade level expectations. We left that one the same, I think. And then we wanted to put a little bit more of the onus on, um, uh, I think the onus was already there on the district, but this, I think we shifted it just slightly more by adding, by, by switching up this language a little bit. There are no barriers to academic success based on identity or socioeconomic status for MRPS students. All students have the access they need to opportunities that will help them succeed. And that in the second sentence, that edit there is a is our way of trying to take um, equitable, which is a little bit of a jargony word in education and other sort of quote unquote industries these days, but make it a little bit more of like, this is what we mean by equitable is that they have the access they need um, and having it be more just like plain speak, um, which uh, I think Mm -hmm. does it. Um, And then our graduates envision a limitless path to their futures and chosen pursuits of continued learning that benefits them and their communities. Uh, That one we left the same. And then we had at the very end a small conversation about though all those that like A through H that were the much more quantitative things, and we've moved them to goals for the conversation at the next part of the retreat. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? I I struggle a little bit with this rewording here of the, there are no barriers to academic success based on identity and socioeconomic status. The way that it was worded before, the way I'm reading it, um, are not predictive of academic success. It's sort of like we want to we want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to um, for kids who come from lower socioeconomic status or have certain barriers. You know, the opportunity gap that we were talking about, um, barriers to their learning, that we want to provide enough um, support in within the school environment that they have that you can't 
take out the free and reduced lunch students and see a clear correlation to their, you know, uh, test scores. Yeah. And so to me, like, that's the, that's the goal is that we don't, and maybe it is a, a goal and not an indicator, but to say there are no barriers, it's like, in, by their very nature, like that is a barrier, mm. you know, like if mm. I'm coming from a family that nobody in my family has ever been to college, you know, all of my ancestors, right. That's a barrier. Mm. And I think it can be named as such, like it's, you know, I'm working at a, at a distinct disadvantage to the kid whose parents have been talking about college since birth and dressing them in a little Harvard onesie or whatever, mm -hmm. like there is a, that is what the opportunity gap is. Like if my parents don't have money to pay for an outside tutor and another family's parent does, that's a barrier. Yeah. Like, yeah. and, and it can be named, like, it's like, that is what we're talking about when right. we're talking about opportunity. And what we're gap. doing is working against those barriers. As a right. Teacher. But to word you. it as there are no barriers to academic success based yeah. on identity. And so it, like, that is just wrong. Like there yeah. are barriers. Yeah. There are, it's such a difficult barrier to overcome. And that's why pretty much every school across the nation, if you look at their free and reduced lunch population, yeah. correlate with, you know, so, and that's why I said in, in a meeting a long time ago, I was like, if we can, if we can make this happen, like we're going to be like getting national news attention, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. because it is such a barrier. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. I said, said it very, very well. There, I, I mean, not just aren't there, but there are barriers that I think our job is to recognize those barriers and then do what we can to mm -hmm. give students school to, to overcome them. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah, kind of what you were getting at right in this provision was also that MRPS will work to eliminate those barriers to the extent that we can, right? That there is a limit that there are these kind of mm -hmm. preconditioned, culturally informed yeah. system uh, induced, you know, um, barriers that you know, we as a, as a district are left with to try and do our best to mm -hmm. solve and reduce. And I, um, I don't even know if we can like eliminate them. I think it's like given students who have overcome it. I mean, for instance, okay. like you, you can't eliminate the fact that someone might not live in a household that values a college education and can never get the process, but you can, instill in students that they're yeah you know, that they have the tools to succeed in college and then giving them counseling that can guide them through the college process in a way that some mm -hmm. families might be able to guide their own children through the college process mm -hmm. and you can do things like that scott are you trying to edit it so that yeah i'm trying to thread the needle of combining the two and mm -hmm. what if it's the barriers to academic success based on identity and socioeconomic status, yes. don't predict. I know that's like making it a longer sentence maybe mm -hmm. than it needs to mm -hmm. be. But I think the thing that I was trying to get at is that someone's identity might actually be a predictor in as a benefit to their right. academic success. There could be strengths and, and or there are strengths and and benefits that come with you know, being a gay black kid. And we want to make sure that that is celebrated as well as recognize that there are also things in your education that are harder about that. Anyway, so, mm -hmm. but that might be just like a too small of a head of a needle to thread with these indicators of success. Mm -hmm. So I think I did what you just said. And I'm not doing well. No, you did do what I just said, but now we have academic success twice, which oh. I think is easy enough to, yeah, I think it's easy enough to clean up. But yeah, you did do what I said. How about, I think, why don't we just say any barriers based on identity and social general status of students don't yeah. predict academic success? Yep. Well, and I like what you were, you know, you started... <laughs> Jim, you started to sort of word it in a way that like MRPS recognizes the barriers and actively works to, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, so some, something like that, I like too, you know, like if we don't want to just that, cause I think, <clears throat> I think the, it not being predictive of academic success could easily be moved into like the goal category. So if we want to be more like evergreen about it, 
we could talk about like our our it's part of our mission and vision to work to could we say not it, eliminate but sort of any barriers based on identity and social and social students um Well, let's say are recognized and I, I think and, it's enough to just yeah. say it's not going to predict their yeah I, I, I think so too and then mm -hmm. and then we can get to the I think implicit in that is the in order for it not to predict we have to recognize that exactly and give the tools to and work them. exactly yeah. mm -hmm. what do folks think about the edits in the second sentence of that <clears throat> like it I, I really like that. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's good. So then let's keep it moving. Yeah, and I, I like how you guys really tightened the indicators up. And get us to wrapping up with belonging, safety, and wellness. Can we summarize the changes or read the whole thing again? Let's read the whole thing again in the interest yeah. of time because I do want to have a little bit of time <clears throat> closing before we get right. this out. So week. there are five bullets now. We added one. All students, staff, and families, caregivers feel welcomed in our schools and valued for the unique history, identity, and beliefs that they bring to the school community. The environments, systems, and opportunities that foster student and staff wellness are present, successful, and thriving in our schools. Students, staff, and family families, caregivers can expect to feel safe and have a strong sense of belonging and healthy connections to our school district. When disruptive circumstances arise, the district provides structures and systems to build resiliency. Resources are available to staff, students, families, caregivers that enable them to access their education and school community members feel those resources are accessible for them. So, Libby pointed out that when it was believed that there was a potential shooter in school, kids did not feel safe for mm -hmm. a short period of time. And mm -hmm. we can't always control that, whether or not people feel safe, but certainly provide supports as needed when those circumstances come up. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of, we, we kind of, we kind of landed on can expect to feel safe and so say, will feel safe because that's not entirely in our control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also just ensuring we're embedding that resiliency because part of safety and wellness is also, you know, sort of that resiliency as a skill for, you know, these other, to continue on the theme of where kids go after they're done at MRPS, that resiliency is an important skill that's part of being part of a safe community. Really. Any other thoughts or feedback on this one? I wonder if just adding on that new bullet when disruptive circumstances arise that jeopardize the line safety and wellness. Just to, I don't know, it feels like a disruptive circumstance, it, it feels, it could feel out of context if folks don't really understand. We're obviously not going to name a specific incident, but. Um, it could be a microaggression or it could be like right. catastrophic. Right. It could be, yeah. So um, then maybe not have the word disruptive and have what you said. Circumstances arise that right. jeopardize. Mm -hmm. I like jeopardize. Jeopardize, yeah. A feeling of wrong and safety and wellness, not. Sure. Any other thoughts? I think these are good. I mean, it's, yeah, and I think all can I take out all three of these are starting to look quite solid. Yep. Yep. Really solid. 
Yeah, well, nice work. Strong work, team. Yeah. Yeah. No, and thank you, Mia, for guiding us through this. Team, really, team effort. You know, like reminding the ground us and what the what came out of the visioning study, small the, the prep work ahead of time. All this really got us to where we are with some very solid indicators of success. Good work, everyone. So the board meeting next Wednesday. Yeah. We'll be starting to work on the more specific goal areas, correct? No, that's a, on the 6th. That's on the 6th. Yes. Okay. So this next Wednesday was just to reserve. We need more yeah, time here. For this, yeah. So maybe we're or getting it on one sheet and yeah, I, giving some time for it just to make sure. I, yeah. yeah, I think that makes sense. I can do some, I can do the cleanup of it beforehand i won't be at next week's board meeting because i am on vacation but i can do the cleanup of it beforehand and i think it's a good idea to kind of like present it and maybe i don't know if we're going to vote on it necessarily but just codify it in a board meeting so that yeah you know, community the community can see it done i mean i know this was all a public meeting and everything but not in our regular schedule so i think it's a good idea to do what mm -hmm. libby just recommended and then i don't know yeah and then and on the 6th, we'll move on to setting goals. Yeah, and I think we can put a little side, time aside just for, you know, if, how it works after we sit in the room. Yeah, like, right. The thoughts for the future. Right. Yeah. So that's next week's board meeting. And then looking ahead to the meeting on the 6th, which is going to be part two of this retreat, is where we will be getting concrete with goals. And so the question that I'm posing to all of us is, what do you feel like you need in order to set goals? Is there any information that you don't have at your fingertips or questions that you, and you know, you might not know those questions at this very moment, but that's sort of our homework for the next two to three weeks is to think about that and, you know, put yourself in the space of, okay, in that meeting, I'm going to need to say what I think a goal should be for belonging, safety, and wellness for the next one to two years, let's just say. Could I do that right now? Or is there, is there, do I have missing information? And then if the answer is more, I have missing information, try and think about what that is and, you know, send me an email. Like, can I get something? Can I get X, Y, or Z from Jess Murray or Mike Berry or whatever in that lead up time? And the more time they have to do it, like our administrators can't just pull that necessarily out in 24 hours notice. So um, we'll probably need a bit of time for that. That might be actually a worthwhile part of the conversation next week is, okay, we've, this is what it is. We've sat on it for a week. These are, um, what information, is there anything we feel like we need to know that we don't already know in order to be able to set goals? I think would be a good board discussion next Wednesday. And also just um, people just gather email uh, to do Due to some like very understandable personal and professional changes, uh, Seiji has resigned from the board, sadly. Um, so one, I uh, just want to publicly thank Seiji for all his great work, uh, but also uh, we will be looking for a new board member. Um, as you probably all know from personal experience, it takes a little, a little while to get up to speed. Uh, so if we can you know, give some thought to uh, folks who, who might be interested and you know, reach out to them, we'll uh, be putting something out publicly, um, but if we could get a new board member in place to kind of be an effective participant in the budget process, that would be great. I think I think that's very doable given our yeah. time schedule. But, um, and I'll, people who are interested should just email you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, and if we could, ideally, we could get that appointed by. I think the six might be too early, but maybe the beginning after that, mm -hmm. just to give plenty of time. Twenty-eight. You want your new board member to be part of the fun budget season? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that should that, mm -hmm. be enough time to, you know, make sure people have time to get the word out, think about it, and uh, <clears throat> and then also mm -hmm. have them meeting fully in the budget process. Is the is there a new agenda planning calendar I'm making it right now I was waiting until this work is done because I want to I want to plan the board presentations based on this work based on yeah and the goals that we set it so yeah. when are our next meetings 16 um, the 16th 6th and then two weeks in the 6th 
The meeting calendar is available online yeah. though still. It's just okay. not in the in a planning document, but there is the meeting calendar for 2020. Yeah. Okay. I am on vacation next week. Same here. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I mean, I have a quorum. Not have a quorum. Four. Okay. Four. I'm here. Four. 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 But Lynn, you might have Lynn. You have Lynn. So you need to know if you have Lynn. What do we need? Four or five. Five. Four or five. Uh, five, there are nine board members. Um, when we have a vacancy, does that reduce the number needed for a quorum? Nope. No. So, sorry, parliamentarian, a quorum is needed only for a vote. Um, no. For decisions that are made. So if no decisions are made. But consent agenda is a decision. Yeah, the consent agenda is a decision. But that could but potentially be pushed out, or is how important is it for it to happen on that day? Well, there are warrants. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it's very many. Uh, we could move it. I could log on for the. I was going to say we could move it agenda agenda online yeah. or. Mm -hmm. If we need. Yeah, I mean, let's see how much we have. It sounds like if we have Lynn, we'll be good. We're good. Mm -hmm. If we don't have Lynn, we'll have Jill log on to vote for the consent agenda. Okay. And then yeah. the rest could be a brief discussion mm -hmm. about anything you need in order to yeah. set goals. Yeah, and we'll see how I wish the agenda is because, you know, Brett and Kristen, it, it might not be worth that. I mean, you slot them from Roxbury if it's going to be a short meeting. Just, oh, yeah, you uh, could join virtually so, too. Yeah. We could make it a virtual meeting in just, general because MHS is still. Oh, yeah, that's just because oh, yes. MHS is still going to be. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I we'd, have, we'd have to find an alternative that. location. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's let's do that. Let's just make it virtual, given given the limited attendance, the limited agenda, and the fact that MHS is still. Um, still not a place that we want to meet. Or invite the public to come to. Or invite the public to come to. Okay. Yeah. I had two follow-ups. Um, the board vacancy, we're in, we'll have people email you, but that will that be publicly shared, noted via various. Yeah, we'll, we'll get we'll yeah, get okay. something out. Um, we work with that. We get something out. Okay. Uh, I can imagine right now she's at her desk already forming some sort of yeah. yes. <laughs> flyer, uh, flyer, she's knowing this, yeah. knowing this, Anna. Okay. She's giggling at me right now. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> um, and then two, in terms of thinking about goals and the continuation of this work, are we going to kind of pre-organize into groups? Just um, it seems like anybody could suggest anything in any of the priority areas in terms of goals and data needed, but I'm just like, it was helpful to kind of have a specific priority area to sort of focus on and ground into. So I'm curious if we're gonna follow similar suit. Would others be interested in doing that? It would happen sometime the, before the sixth. The idea of people staying in their original groups to focus yeah. in on that, but then, yeah. and then doing kind of the world cafe yeah. that you did today was yeah. I right. think probably really helpful to get yeah. their brains on. I think that was really helpful. So. Yeah, okay. Great. Okay. So do you want to make any uh, changes knowing that Sagey is not on the belonging safety and wellness committee anymore or thought group? I mean, any, any one of them is going to be, and have just two people. Are there folks that would rather be in a different group than the one they were previously in for the prep work? Did you want to go to communication? Strong, I don't have strong feelings, but I'm happy to shift if you want me to. I'll keep you where you are. It's keep it simple. <laughs> okay, so then that'll just be each group should self-organize the way that we did leading up to part one of the retreat. Because that seemed to work for giving people schedules and things like that. And if you do end up having a meeting of two or three people, you should warn it because it'll be discussing board business. Okay. I guess meeting of three people. So it's just a conversation. Just a conversation. That's right. And, <laughs> and, 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 and one is just one person talking. <laughs> <laughs> like Kristen did a lot. Well, Kristen did a lot of that. One is every day. <laughs> should we adjourn? Um, yeah, we have to adjourn. Yeah, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.